Welcome a new person. Welcome a new neighbor. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. You just moved in, right? Yes. Great. My house is right next door. My name is Peter. Welcome to the neighborhood. Oh, that's very kind of you. My pleasure to meet you. I'm Robert. Ah, oh, Robert. If you don't mind me asking, where are you from? Oh, I really don't mind. I'm Australian, but I went to university here and now I work here too. Wow. I've always wanted to visit Australia one day. You should. It's a beautiful country. Amazing nature in all things. I definitely will. So what about you? Where are you from? Oh, I'm American. My family moved a lot, all across the country really, but I settled here after I married. So you have actually traveled a lot. How long have you been married? Just two years. What a coincidence! Me too! I actually moved because my wife got an amazing job offer. That's good for her! What does she do? She's a lawyer, and a very good one, I have to say. Really, I really admire female lawyers. Most of them are so strong and determined. Exactly. That's why I noticed her in the first place. Well, looking at your clothes, I guess you are a teacher, aren't you? Wow, you are actually correct. I teach philosophy at the university downtown. Oh, such a stable job. Yes, the salary is really good, too. My wife also works, so we are quite comfortable financially. Sounds like you have a great life, Peter. I do. I'm so satisfied with it. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, Alice. Meet Peter, our next-door neighbor. Peter, this is Alice, my wife. Hello, Peter. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Robert speaks so nice about you. Well, he definitely should. We just moved in, so if something occurred, I hope we could get some help from you. Oh, that's a certain thing. We're always happy to help. So do not hesitate to knock on our door whenever you need. It's reassuring to hear that. Yes, we will keep that in mind. It's getting darker already. It's 6 p.m. I guess we should get inside now. We have a dinner to prepare for. Ah, speaking about dinner, is there any chance that you are free tomorrow evening? I would like to invite you to come over to our house for dinner. Really? That's a great invitation. It definitely is. We will make sure to come. Thank you. It probably will start at 7. Okay, we will be there on time. It's really nice to talk to you, Peter. Have a good evening. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Welcome a new member. Hi, I'm glad you joined our team. Hi, everyone. I'm a newbie. Nice to meet you. Hello there. Welcome to our team. My name is Anna. This is Anne. Nice to meet you, too. My name is Joey. Where are you from? I am from Vietnam. How about you? Oh, I know. I have heard of Vietnam. It is such a beautiful and peaceful country. I am from Italy. Italy is wonderful. Your accent is very clear. Thank you. So this is our room? Yes. We decided to decorate a little bit before you came. 
Hope you will like it. So roomy. I love it. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Joey. Um, can you give me a hand with luggage, please? Sure, let me help you. Hey, I love your shoes. That's my favorite brand, Jordan. Can I try it on? Yeah, sure. It may fit with you, too. How do I look? Awesome. Feel like home, Joey? Uh, I love the decorations. Who are they? Ah, Jimmy and Alex are next door. They are really friendly. Do you want to see them? I'm confused. Uh, maybe next time, girls. Don't worry, it's okay. Follow me, Joey. Okay, let's go. Hey, what's up? Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Alex. Uh, you must be Joey. Yes, it's me. Nice to meet you. Have you guys had lunch yet? Not yet. Can we have lunch together? Sounds good to me. What do you want to eat? I suggest we have spaghetti for lunch. How about crepes? Mm, I like hamburgers and sushi. I know some places that are very good. We can drink some beers, too. I'm excited right now, but how far is it? No, not too far. Don't worry, Joey. Okay, sounds good. Let's go. Giving gifts. Hello, Eliza. Have you planned anything for the holiday yet? I am thinking about it. I need to prepare some gifts for my parents when I come back home. Yes, the holiday season is coming up and many kinds of gift for New Year's are now available at the market. New Year is the biggest holiday in my country, so gifts are necessary. So, when do people give gifts or presents in your country? In my country, people give presents on some different occasions, such as wedding anniversaries, birthdays, Parents' Day or Valentine's Day. Perhaps when people buy their first apartment or home, they also give gifts? People also give gifts during religious festivals like Christmas holidays. And sometimes they give gifts at graduation ceremonies. I agree. What kinds of gifts do you usually choose? I usually take something like some flowers for my grandmother. I know she loves flowers, so they always make her happy, which is great. I give chocolate and jewelry for women, while wallets or watches for men, since these are very much useful in a man's everyday life. I think you like giving expensive gifts, right? Yes, I feel like giving valuable presents means giving importance to the person who receives the gifts. But I think those gifts still have reasonable price and are decent. You know, I'm not as generous as I should be, and I'm rather tight-fisted when it comes to usually giving presents only on birthdays. Yeah, we should only make sure that the gift will bring a smile to the face of the receiver. That's true. Do you spend a lot of time choosing gifts? I really enjoy looking for gifts for people because it is really gratifying to be a part of a good cause, especially if it involves making someone happy. Well, I am totally the opposite. For me, it also gives me an idea as to what kinds of new gift items are available at the market. Because you work in the industry. That makes sense. What about your time while choosing presents? 
So to answer your question, I love to buy a suitable gift for others, but I do not spend hours after hours doing so. Instead, I visit a large shop or an online store that has numerous gift items, and then I quickly pick a gift. But do you think sending gifts is important? Of course, yes. The purpose of giving gifts is to show how much someone means to us and to celebrate the person who the gift is in honor of. I would like to add that it can also be aimed at amending our past bitterness and misunderstandings in order to refresh our relationship. On the other hand, giving and receiving today has become a commercial activity. Sometimes we are forced to give and receive gifts. I totally agree with your point. Nowadays, presents are much more symbolic rather than substantial or useful. People these days often give and receive technology-related gifts, which were quite rare in the past. I would say that in the past, specifically ten years ago, the types of gifts exchanged were primarily clothes, toys, household appliances, and books. Apart from the fact that they weren't related to technology, they were also significantly important, educational, and in most cases really expensive. Globalization has given us products from more places around the world to enjoy, and online shopping has made it a lot easier for us to acquire them without the hassle of going to shops. I only like something practical. It might be kind of boring, but I like to get things like socks and underwear because I always need those, and I don't like shopping for those things. <laughs> I rarely see anyone giving underwear as presents, Dan. That's my dream. Or perhaps food or drink. Food or drink is more suitable. If it's a friend's house, then I will give you a bottle of wine or something like that. Oh, I just realized I often have different ideas for gifts. I also tend to travel a lot, so I always try to bring back souvenirs for family and friends so I can share in some small way my experience. Do you prefer sending or receiving gifts? I like to be given something. It's exciting to unwrap a present and see what it is. Also, it shows that someone cares about you. Or maybe it just means they want something in return. So what is the last time you received a gift? Oh, this is hilarious. Just a couple hours ago, I received a bag of sweet potatoes from the owner of the mini supermarket at the corner of my street. I still don't know why she gave me, but... She said not to worry about paying for them. It was a complete surprise, but a really nice gesture by her. Is she close to you that much? Not really. That's why I was quite shocked. When is your last time? My friends presented me with a few books on my last birthday. They bought four novels that they knew I wanted to read and surprised me on my birthday. Two of these books are written by John Grisham. The other two are The Fault in Our Stars and The Handmaid's Tale. I know those two books, too. The content is really good. Yes, and I received some money on my birthday as well. What do you think about giving money as a gift? It's a down-to-earth choice, since then the receiver can put that money to use on pressing matters, or get something that they will really enjoy. And it's a safe choice for events like birthdays or weddings. That's true. Anyway, I'm going to the supermarket now to have a look at gifts. Bye. Hope you choose many knife gifts for relatives. Wedding. Situation 1. Amelia and her daughter Sophie go to her friend's wedding. Sophie is so excited, she asks her mom about the wedding she has attended. 
Wow, everything is so pretty like paradise. I like this pink theme. What do you think, Mom? I like it too. A beautiful wedding is every girl's dream, even myself back then. I saw photos of your wedding. It was amazing too, Mom. The most important thing was to marry my favorite person, which is your dad. I hope that I have a wedding like that one day. How much do you reckon it costs to pull this wedding off? I think it cost them a lot of money. Do you hope to have a wedding as big as theirs? I don't think so. I want to have a bigger wedding. Why do you want to have a bigger wedding? I want to have a large wedding that everyone will remember. You can have a small wedding and people will still remember it. As long as you marry your love, your wedding will be perfect. Have you ever attended someone's wedding? Who were they? Yes, a lot. Some of my cousins, friends, colleagues, but the most memorable one is my best friends. Who went with you? I went with one of my classmates. Where was the wedding organized? It was held in a restaurant downtown. Was it amazing? How many people were there? It was great, and it was a small wedding. Only her close friends and relatives were invited. What did people do at the wedding? They enjoyed the wedding feast, sang and danced together after giving the couple the best wishes of everlasting happiness. What did the bride and groom wear? The bride wore a white wedding gown, while the groom wore a black suit and tie. What was the most interesting ritual at the wedding? Exchanging rings is the ritual I'm quite interested in. It was so emotional, a lot of people cried. The groom and bride's eyes were sparkling, and then I knew they were meant for each other. Are weddings a special event in one's life? Yes, along with birthdays. Because we only marry once or twice, usually. And the ceremony is intimate and special. Things like that don't happen a lot. Do people get married early? Not really. The average age to get married for women is 27 and for men is 29. What is the ideal age to get married in your opinion? Well, 27 would be my ideal age. Women are most charming and mature at that age, I guess. How have weddings changed recently? The most noticeable change is the reduction of rituals in a wedding. There used to be more steps in weddings years ago than there are now. Like what, Mom? For example, after the ceremony, the bride had to speak to her parents first. Or the family of the bride would essentially pay the husband to be a sum of money. As a sort of thanks for being willing to marry their daughter. That's so strange. Nobody does that anymore. And a couple needed to bury a bottle of bourbon at their wedding site. Exactly one month before the ceremony to have a sunny sky on their wedding. It was more complicated and superstitious back then. I want a simple wedding without any of those old-fashioned and weird traditions. Sure, honey. When it's about time, we will plan your wedding together. Thank you, Mom. It will be so much fun. Situation 2 Henry flies to America from England to attend his friend Michael's wedding. He's curious about the wedding traditions in America, so he discusses with Michael's friend, Dave, about the traditions in England and America. Hi Henry, welcome to America. Thank you so much for being here. It means a lot, Michael. It's my pleasure. This is the first time I attended an American wedding. I'm so excited. Come this way. This is your seat. Thanks. So I heard that American weddings are different from weddings in England. 
Couples living in England do not have as many pre-wedding activities as those in the United States. Really? What activities do you guys have? While we do have bachelor and bachelorette parties, we do not hold bridal showers or rehearsal dinners. Are bachelor and bachelorette parties in the UK different from those in the US? While the party themes in the UK are extravagant, the budget isn't excessive. The average Brit spends about 507 euros on their weekend pre-wedding parties. In the US, bachelor party attendees spend on average of $738 for the festivities, while bachelorette party attendees spend about $472. The actual ceremony is quite different too. How? Oh. In England, the wedding party is usually small. The bride walks down the aisle before her bridesmaids. The groom keeps his back towards the bride as she walks down the aisle. In here, the groom faces the bride for the entire procession, but I think the British tradition is better. That's the tradition we love most. The groom faces away from the bride until she reaches him, and everyone gets to experience their first look. How about the bridesmaids and groomsmen in the UK? Instead of a maid of honor, a bride selects a chief bridesmaid. British bridesmaids sit during the ceremony, while most American bridesmaids stand beside the bride throughout the service. Do the groomsmen give funny toasts like in the US? British wedding toasts are more like roasts. But they're still polite and the jokes are pretty simple. The speeches also don't take up much time. In America, it's customary for the best man in the maid of honor to make a short speech. And maybe even one of the parents. That's not something you'll see in British weddings. Only men tend to make the speeches, and the main objective is to embarrass the couple. Have you been to many weddings in your country? Actually, this is the first wedding I've attended. I heard that if you're British, the first wedding you attend might be your own. That's right. The British have a strict rule. No ring, no bring. If a couple is not married, the guest's significant other is not invited to the ceremony or reception following. How about close friends and family members that are unmarried? There's a separate reception later at night for those close friends and family. Unmarried guests are invited to bring their significant others to this reception. This person has to truly be a significant other, oftentimes engaged, to be invited. In America, we are given an open invitation for a plus one. Is this reception similar to the reception in the US? Dinner is served with dancing to follow. There is also a bar at the evening reception, not at the morning reception. Lastly, the couple often gives their own toasts to each other and their guests at the evening reception. The evening reception is more intimate, right? Yes, but there's one key difference. If you brought a gift, you'll feel out of place. Really? Yes. Gifts are always mailed directly to the couple and never brought to the ceremony or reception. That's a good idea. A big, gaudy array of wrapped presents doesn't exactly make the party any better. I know. When I get married, I will invite you so you can attend an actual British wedding. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. We've broken up. There are many reasons why people decide to end up in a relationship. Let's see this video and see the situation between Emma and Dave. Hey Lily, how do you do? Hi Emma, I'm alright. Long time no see. Is everything okay? Yes, it's good. I am planning to open my own store. Quite busy. I don't think that I have too many things to prepare like this. It's just a small store. Where is it located? If it's close to my house, I will come to help you sometimes. It's in the T3 building, ten minutes away from my house. Ah, it's the pink building, isn't it? 
Yes, come any time you want. I seem always to be there day and night. <laughs> you should take a break. If not, you may be stressed out. Yes, I know. So, I will go to the beach next weekend. Do you want to join me? Which one? Fourth Kernow Beach in Cornwall. It's small, but we can walk along soft white sand by the turquoise sea. There is the legendary Minak Theater nearby, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Will you go with me? But, come on. I know you will go with Dave as well. I haven't had a boyfriend to invite, and I don't want to be at the third wheel. No, Dave doesn't come, actually. I broke up with him one month ago. Hey, are you kidding me? Dave and you always look so happy. No, it's not a joke. We've broken up. We cannot get along with each other anymore. Really? Dave is a good one, though. Not at all, Lily. If you know what he did with me, you will change your mind. Well, it sounds serious. What did he do? Did you watch his The First cover song? The first one was in the last year. You mean To the Moon? Oh, this video is so visual. I remember that time. Teenagers got crazy with it. Yes, it reached 3 million views and he became famous. I think it's so-so. He isn't even a star, but he started acting like an A-list celeb. But it's just what he showed on social media, as long as he still loves you and takes care of you. Yeah, if it's just on social media. You know, he began ignoring all his friends. He always lived in his virtual world. I don't think he's that kind of person. Even, he stopped taking care of me. He was always busy. He considers himself the center of the universe. Calm down, Emma. Did you try to talk with him to solve it? Yes, definitely. But nothing changed. He didn't realize what he was doing. I also found out that he had flirted with many girls on the internet. We argued too much about this issue. And there was one day... Dave, did you feed Plum? Yes, absolutely. You should bring him to the spa tomorrow to cut his hair. Okay, are we going together? Um, no. I have to complete my new video and upload it. It needs to be released at 7.30pm so that it gets more interactions. Why do you always concentrate on social media every day like this? You need to take time for me and your friends in your real life as well. Emma, you're not a baby anymore. You know how to take care of yourself, don't you? I have my own business to be done. Why don't you stand by me? You just judge me every time. It hurts me so bad, Dave. I don't want to talk with you right now, but you can ask your friends how you changed. The stranger's opinions are not important. I don't care. Okay, it's up to you. I'm so tired. Turn off the lamp when you go to bed. <laughs> what is that noise? Yes, thanks for loving my video. I made it for my fans, especially you. Sure, I will live stream tomorrow. Don't forget to send me a heart. What? Do you want to meet me, babe? Sure, I'm free next week. Let me know. What are you doing, Dave? Who are you talking with? Yes, bye-bye. I will text you later. Dave! Why do you wake up at this time? You should be back to sleep. I'm asking you, why don't you answer me? A fangirl, that's all. Why are you talking so loud? Fangirl? Do you need to talk privately with a fangirl in the middle of the night? Come on. Why do you so serious? I'm a hot YouTuber. I need to keep my interactions with my fans and- Shut up! You don't think what you are saying is so stupid and unreasonable? Do you think I'm a fool? I'm too tired of this relationship. You're jealous, all the time. Whenever I talk with a girl, you begin getting mad. What are you saying? So how do you want me to react to it? When you flirt with a girl in front of my face? Should I say congrats to the two of you? 
I can't stand you anymore. You make me look like a dump. I think we should break up. What are you saying? You were breaking up with me? Have you thought carefully? Yes, I'm so tired of you. I've nothing to say to you anymore. When we calm down, we will talk about it. Don't waste time anymore. <sighs> then I got back to my room and cried all night. Oh my! He's a jerk! You should have broken up with him immediately when you knew he flirted with other girls. Stupid me, you know? I cried a lot at that time. Now, when I look back, I cannot understand what I was thinking at that time. Why did I cry for a bad guy like Dave? If I was you, I would slap at his face. A jerk! I moved out of his house the day after. Now I am living with my sister. Do you feel better now? Absolutely. At first, I felt depressed, but then gradually I felt better, thinking clearly. I no longer need to obsess about daily monitoring to keep my boyfriend. Love should be based on trust. If I continue loving him, I will not have happiness. Bravo! You are a star. I'm glad that you can think positively. This trip is to relax and refresh. Will you go with me? Of course! We are going to make an impressive plan for it. Perfect. I will send you the details on Facebook. Autumn Activities Let's watch the following video to find out what activities people often do in the fall. Dialogue 1. Apple Picking Hey, Julia! Hey, Lucy! Guess what? What? What is it? Do you know that there's an apple farm nearby? Really? Why have I never heard of that before? I didn't know about it either. I just heard from my cousin that he went apple picking with his friends last week. It's apple season, and I know you like apples a lot. So do you want to go to that farm with me? Are you kidding? You know that I love everything about apples. I'm definitely going. Great! Let's also invite Kelly, Rachel, and Sarah to come with us. Sure, the more the merrier. Okay, I'll text them later. Where exactly is that apple farm? It's in Syracuse. What? You said it's nearby! That's not nearby! Oh, it's not that far away from here. I just did an online search. It only takes a bit more than three hours to go from Poughkeepsie to Syracuse, if we go by train. Well, that's still quite some time. Come on, we have nothing to do on the weekend anyway. Besides, think about all the amazing things we can do there. We can wander around, relax, and pick plenty of apples to bring home. Yeah, you're right. I guess the long trip will be worth it. Yeah, it'll be fun. Also, we can make so many things with the apples we pick. Uh-huh. Apple juice, apple pie, apple sauce. Exactly. Do you know how much the tickets will be? I suppose we'll need tickets to get into the apple farm. No, my cousin said we don't need to buy tickets. Anyone can visit the apple farm after calling the farm's owners. We only need to pay money if we want to bring the apples back home. Ah, I see. That's great. Let me talk to the guys and buy the train tickets then. Okay, cool. Dialogue 2. Halloween Costume This Saturday is Halloween. Have you guys had any ideas for your costumes yet? Yep, I'll be a brown rabbit. My cousin helped me find the perfect costume. Ooh, nice. I'll show you guys the costume soon. It's really cute. What about you, Luke? What character will you be? I'm gonna be a mummy. Cool choice. 
Yeah, I'll just need to use toilet paper for my costume. Don't you think toilet paper is a little bit too thin, though? It'll be hard to keep it still on your body, and it may even dissolve and break up if you happen to get wet. You're right. Why didn't I think of that? Ah, I know. We can use old white sheets. Just rip them into long strips and wrap them around you. Great idea. I'll ask my mom to help me with that. What will you be, Haley? I'm going to be an evil witch. Cool. I thought you were a witch last year's Halloween. Yeah, I'm a witch every year because it is always my favorite Halloween costume. <laughs> I see. I need to think of something to make my costume a bit different from last year, though. Do you guys have any suggestions for me? How about making a DIY costume this time? What does DIY mean? It means do it yourself instead of renting a costume from the store. You can be as creative as you want, and it will save you lots of money. Hmm, interesting. That doesn't sound too bad. I already have a black dress at home. Yeah, you still have plenty of time left. You just need to buy a hat and a cape. You can design them however you want. Yeah, and I think I can also make my own magic wand and broom. Sounds great. Thank you for all these awesome ideas. I'll start preparing for my costume right away. Let's meet again on Halloween night. Okie dokie. See you guys. Bye, guys. Dialogue 3. Sightseeing in the Fall. Hi, Julianne. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Julianne. What are you doing this weekend? I don't think I have any plans. What's up? I'm thinking about going to Boston to do some sightseeing. Would you like to join me? Yes, of course. The weather is so beautiful now. It'll be a shame if we stay at home all weekend. How about we go there? Should we buy bus tickets? Don't worry. I managed to borrow my cousin's car. Let's drive there. Boston is only two hours from here, and we can also enjoy the sights on the way. Yeah, awesome. I'm so excited. I often hear other people say that Boston is most beautiful in the fall. It really is. I've been to Boston in the fall before. All the leaves on the trees would turn yellow or red. Plenty of dry leaves also fall on the ground. And there's warm sunlight which shines through layers of colorful leaves. It's such a beautiful scenery that no words can describe. You've got to see it for yourself. Wow, that sounds wonderful. I've thought of plenty of things we can do. We can have a picnic in the park, visit the famous Harvard University, and take a walk on the street to enjoy the beautiful weather and scenery. Yeah, sounds nice. I also want to try Boston's signature dishes like lobster rolls and clam chowder. They are classics. I know a very good restaurant in Boston. I'll take you there. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Dialogue 4. Chestnut Roasting and Pumpkin Carving Hi, Meg. Hey, Joe. Come on in. What are you carrying? Those bags look heavy. Let me help you carry them inside. Thanks. These are chestnuts. Chestnuts? Wow, I can't believe they are selling chestnuts already. Autumn is really here. I know, right? Halloween is this weekend, and it's going to be Thanksgiving soon. Anyway, I saw some raw chestnuts when going grocery shopping at the local farmer's market yesterday. They looked so good that I couldn't help it. I bought some so that we will have something to eat while carving pumpkins today. Great idea! Roasted chestnuts are one of my favorite street food in the cold season, but I always have been buying roasted chestnuts from street vendors. I actually have never tried roasting them at home before. Don't worry, roasting chestnuts at home are not hard at all. I'll show you how to do that. Cool, let's get to the kitchen. 
so what do we do? First, we need to go through all the raw chestnuts we bought and pick out the best ones. How do we know which ones are not good? Look at their shells! The good ones will have hard and shiny shells. They shouldn't be too light and rattle when you shake them. Ah, okay, let me see. Most of the chestnuts seem fine and not spoiled. Yeah, I like to shop at the farmer's market because most of the food there is fresh. Right, I agree. Oh, I just found three chestnuts that are cracked. It's best if we throw them away. Okay, what's next? We need to wash them properly and dry them off because we'll touch the shells when eating. All right, done. Next, we'll make an X-shaped cut on the shell. This step is really important because it will prevent the chestnuts from exploding when being roasted. Ah, that's why. Then we'll put them in the oven, right? Yeah, it'll take 10 to 20 minutes. We'll wait till the shells burst open and the chestnuts look golden brown. I see. Thanks for teaching me how to make roasted chestnuts. I can do it at home now. No problem. While we wait for the chestnuts, let's switch to carving the pumpkins. Here are the pumpkins we picked out on Thursday. Let me find two sharp knives. Okay, let's start by cutting out the top part. Do you need a spoon? I often remove some of the flesh so it's easier to carve. Good idea! Can I also borrow a marker? I want to draw the face before I start carving. Here you are. Be careful when carving. I will, thanks. You're done already? So fast! Yep, I'm done. How does it look? It looks amazing! You are really an expert. <laughs> thanks. I'm used to carving pumpkins since I do this every year. Hey, I think our chestnuts are done roasting. They smell so good. Yay, let's get them out and eat them while they're still hot. Winter Activities Dialogue 1 Bluey and Mia are high school friends. They catch up at a tea house after not seeing each other for a while. Hello, ladies. What tea would you like to have today? I will have chai tea, please. Thank you. Oh, that sounds amazing. May I have the same as well? Sure. That will take about five minutes. In the meantime, please enjoy some cookies. They're on the house. We will. Thank you so much. So, Mia, tell me what you've been up to lately. Not much. I just stay home and watch TV. It's too cold outside to do anything. I know, right? The other day, I tried to go for a hike, but the snow was really heavy. I ended up staying in and cooking up a delicious soup for my family instead. Oh, really? What soup did you make? Chicken noodle soup. It's quick and easy. It's also everyone's favorite, especially in winter. I agree. It's my favorite as well. Can you send me the recipe for it later? Of course! I'll send it to you as soon as I get home. By the way, I love the sweater you're wearing. Where did you get it? Thank you! My mom knitted it, actually. I have been wearing it every day. It keeps me warm and the color is so pretty. Your mom is very talented. I remember her teaching us how to make gingerbread cookies when we were kids. Oh yes, I miss that too. Visit us soon, Chloe. We can bake some of those just like old times. I would love that. Dialogue 2 Kyle and David are neighbors. A new ice rink just opened near Kyle and David's neighborhood. Kyle is asking David if he wanted to visit the place with him. Hey, David, the sun is finally out. Do you want to go ice skating with me? A new ice rink just opened near here. I can't. 
I lost my skates last winter when I was on holiday. Oh, that's unfortunate. Is there anything else you want to do? It has not been this sunny in a while. We should not waste such a beautiful day. You are right. What about snowboarding? My dad gave me a snowboard for Christmas. I'm not that good at snowboarding, but I will try if you help me. Of course. Let's go get our snowboards, then we can head out. Dialogue 3 It's the first snow day this winter. Tammy is excited about playing in the snow while Leo is not. Look! It's finally snowing! I can't wait to go outside to build a snowman or have a snowball fight. Do you want to join me, Leo? It's going to be a lot of fun. Hmm. You go ahead, Tammy. I don't really like snow that much. Oh? Why not? It's just really cold and slippery. I fell and injured my knee the last time I walked in the snow. I'm still a bit scared. I'm sorry. That must have been painful. You know you can buy special shoes for walking in the snow. They make it less slippery and safer for you. Really? I've never heard of them. I will have to check them out. Thank you so much. No problem. Do you want to go grab a cup of coffee instead? We can take the car. Don't we have to remove snow from the driveway and defrost the car first? I already did that. What if the road is busy? The snow is pretty heavy today. Oh, come on. It's only 7 a.m. I don't think many people are up yet. Stop being lazy. Let's go. Okay. Dialogue 4. Even though Miley and Megan are siblings, they have different opinions about cold weather. Oh no! It's snowing again! I was hoping it would be sunny today. Don't you like snow, Miley? It's really pretty to me. Yes, it's beautiful, but it's so cold that we can't do much. I guess, but I enjoy staying inside, having a cup of hot chocolate, and reading an interesting book. The cold weather makes it cozier. That's not my cup of tea. I'd rather go outside and be active. I miss when it was sunny. I could stay outside all day and play all kinds of sports. You know we can still play sports in the winter, right? Like ice skating, playing hockey, or snowboarding? You're right. But I don't have the equipment needed for those sports. Then let's just go outside and make some snow angels or have a snowball fight. That actually sounds like fun. Let's go, Megan. Dialogue 5 Lucy explains to Nina, her daughter, what animals do to survive cold weather. Do you know winter is the coldest season of the year, Nina? Yes, Mom. I can't stay outside for too long or else I'll get sick. That's right. But what do you think animals do? They don't have houses like us, do they? No, they don't. How do they deal with the cold, Mom? Some animals go into hibernation, which saves them energy. Does that mean they sleep the entire day, Mom? Something like that, dear. That's sad. There is so much to do in the winter. We can have snowball fights, build snowmen, go ice skating, snowboarding, or sledding for children like me. By the way, can I go sledding, Mom? Sure, but remember to wear warm clothes, dear. Dialogue 6. Tom and Michael make plans for Christmas Eve. Do you mind going to the mall with me to buy Christmas presents for my sister, Michael? 
I forgot to do that earlier. Sure, Tom. Which mall are you planning to visit? Uh, the one just around the corner. We can walk there. Okay, let's go. Do you have any plans afterward? Not yet. Why? I just want to ask you to go to this Christmas Eve candlelight service with me. What will we do there? Uh, we can enjoy some choir performances and Christmas carols. That sounds interesting. Where is it hosted? It's at our local church, which is actually right across the mall. Let's go then. I'm sure it will be fun. Working part-time jobs. Daniel is hiring some employees to work a part-time job. Mike is one of the applicants. Hello, Mike. Take a seat. Thank you, sir. Can I see your resume, please? I have received the online version of your CV, but I just wanted to be sure. Here you go, sir. Everything you require is in that document case. You got quite an interesting history for a student of your age, Mike. There seems like nothing is out of the ordinary. Just relax, kid. This is just for a part-time job. Usually, these so-called interviews aren't as strict as the more long-termed ones. But nevertheless, I want you to know if you are right for the job. So tell me, Mike, what brings you here? Well, sir, I wanted to apply for a part-time job to get used to the roughness of society. So through hours of applying, I'm here. And do you expect to be paid handsomely? No, I don't, sir. The experience of working is enough to keep me going. I'm sorry if this is offensive, but no undergraduates apply for a part-time job without having money as a goal in their mind. I understand, sir, and I am sorry. Please, just call me Dan or Mr. Dan, and no need to be sorry. So, how has your university life been, Mike? It has been great, actually. I'm a freshman of international business major. I've managed to become an official member of one of my school's clubs. Being socially open, aren't ya? It's nice to see one fit in easily with his surroundings. So I assume that you are communicating skill is at a decent level? I wouldn't really consider my talking skills anywhere near charming, but still natural nevertheless. Cool. That's all I expected, Mike. Now, how about your other skills, such as multitasking or concentration? I'm not very good at multitasking, but I can put my mind into a single thing for a long period of time. That is very beneficial in the future for you. What about your time management ability? I know that freshman year at university can be overwhelming, but can you be self-organized enough to make sure the deadline is met? I can prioritize particular tasks based on their importance, so I am confident as I can, Mr. Dan. Your attitude is straightforward and honest, isn't it, Mike? But anyway, before we end this short interview, I would like to advise you something. Leave out some time for you to rest and balance between studying, socializing, and working, okay? Thank you for the advice, Mr. Dan. I appreciate the advice. Well then, here is your resume. Have a good day, sir. Goodbye, Mike. Remember to close the door behind you. Dave is working a part-time job at a grocery store. Jordan accidentally met him and sticks around to talk. I will have these. Oh, hey, Jordan. Long time no see. Dave? Oh, wow. 
I didn't expect to see an old homie around. Yeah, it has been ages since we last met. From high school, isn't it? Since we graduated. Oh, wait, let me check these out for you first. It's 14.65. Here are your groceries. Mind if I stick around for a bit? No problem, bro. It's not every day that I bump into an old mate. And I'm not very busy at this time of day. So, how long have you been working here? For about a month and a half or so. It's pretty uneventful working here, so this job is fine. But this is only a part-time job, though. I haven't graduated yet. Well, it's only two years since we left high school. I only started university a year ago for multiple reasons. Really? Which university do you attend? It would sound a bit odd, but have you heard about the University of People? It's kind of familiar, but I can't really pinpoint what it is. I swear I have heard about it somewhere. It's a free university where people around the world can attend for free as long as they have an internet connection and a full commitment. Oh, I remember that university is very well known for its good deeds and dedication. Yes. I'm really glad and excited when I got recommended by a relative. My life has really turned up from there. Because I'm flexible in my study, I still have time to work some part-time jobs to feed myself and help out my parents. This is only my nighttime job. My daytime job offers wage, but it's equally more stressful. What do you do here anyway? I never get an insight about this sort of work. Well, as the cashier, my main job is to scan these groceries and collect the money. But behind the counter, there are a lot of other minor things to do. Such as when the manager isn't here, I'm tasked with recording and writing down any cargo delivery and report it to him. Keep these shelves stocked and deal with any product shortages. Apart from the regular works, I have to deal with every emergency around. Sometimes that fridge over there breaks down, or the front door is jammed, etc. Usually there would be a guy working the same shifts as me, but today he is coming late. He told me that he would arrive an hour late, which means he will be here in 10 minutes. So I'm the only one keeping you company? Yeah, pretty much. I appreciate this. It could get extremely boring around here. Anytime, man, anytime. So how much do you guys earn from working here? Typically $8 an hour every day. There are no extras in rush hours or holidays. This place would close during holidays or maintenance days. But there are great pulses at this place. I get to be paid every weekend so I can keep up with any surprise bills. That's great for you, man. I hardly know anywhere else with such good policies. But anyway, it's a dead-end job, nevertheless. What about the other jobs you have? Well, I also work around the logistics center next to the supermarket. I'm only the apprentice at the place following the manager where he does his daily routine. I've learned a lot of things there already. The boss there took great care of me. Things seem to be looking up for you, huh? Would there be any chance it would lead to a full-time job? Most likely, yes. I saw a lot of potential for growth at the place. On the online university I talked about, there is a logistics course really suited for my needs. In only one year, I've got most of the basic knowledge of how to run a logistics business and manage. Working at this place also gives me hands-on experience in logistics. 
That's why I stayed at this place working at a seemingly minimum wage. Wow, you got such an admirable spirit for studying and working. I'm really impressed with how everything has turned up for you. Opportunities come from education. I'm happy for you, man, seeing an old dude thriving. Thanks, man. You're a nice guy. Well, it's about time for me to go. Keep up the good work, okay, my dude? I will, man, I will. Goodbye, dude. Cooking Sophie and Anna are going to make cakes on their own to celebrate their parents' 25-year wedding anniversary. Watch the video about the conversation between bakery teacher John and two girls about making cakes. Sister, our parents' 25-year wedding anniversary is coming soon. Do you have any bright ideas to celebrate the anniversary, Anna? Not yet. I just think that we will buy cake and a gift for them. What do you think? Hmm. I want something surprising for them because it's their silver anniversary. I agree with you, but I didn't come up with any ideas. Anna, an idea springs to mind. Make a cake by ourselves. Is that fine? That's good, but we don't know how to make a cake. Uh, search Google. Everything is on it. Did you forget that last time you overbaked chiffon cake over time so it was burned? Come on, why do you always sound like a broken record? I was a little bit careless at the time. I have another great option. Do you want to hear it? Of course. We will take part in a baking class. How do you feel? Why do you think of such bright ideas like that? I couldn't agree more. When? Right now, is that fine? It's up to you, I'm free. So let's go right now. Hi, welcome to Mr. John's baking class. May I help you? We need to join a baking class this afternoon. Where can I apply for the class? This way, please. Do you register for a long-term course or one-day class? Does your center have a 1-1 class? Because we intend to make a cake for my parents' wedding anniversary. Certainly we have that. Here is the place you can register. After completing the procedure, you can participate right now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good afternoon, two girls. Good afternoon, Good afternoon teacher. teacher. So now, I'll introduce myself first. My name is John Beckham. You can call me Teacher John during the class. Hello, Teacher John. I'm Sophie. This is my younger sister, Anna. Hi, Teacher John. It's great to study making cake with you. It's my pleasure. So let's get started with cupcakes. They are often called in special events like a grand opening, party, anniversary, and so on. Yes, I really like it. So excited to make it. So now, let's guess which ingredients you need, Anna and Sophie. For sure. We must have flour, eggs, and vanilla or chocolate, which depends on the taste of cupcakes. What about Sophie's idea? Well, actually, I just know only three ingredients above. That's fine. What kind of flour do we use, girls? Do you know? I don't. Neither do I. We have to use self-raising flour because you will see that your cakes always rise perfectly. And more importantly, that you get a consistent rise every time. What ingredients else, Sophie? 
I don't know. Both of you forgot the most important things, which are milk and butter. Oh, exactly. It completely slipped my mind. Okay, so now I'll list all ingredients we need to make this cake. First of all, as you mentioned, they are eggs, self-raising flour, and vanilla extract. We also need milk, softened butter, icing sugar, and golden caster sugar. Teacher John, why don't you use refined sugar instead of icing one? Simply, icing sugar dissolves quickly in cold water. Sometimes, people keep it on hand just to add to juices, milkshakes, and other cold beverages. So what is the quantity of all the elements, Teacher John? I'll tell you now. 110 grams softened butter, 110 grams golden castor sugar, two large eggs, a half teaspoon vanilla extract, and 110 grams self-raising flour. That's all for the crust. And these are ingredients for buttercream. 150 grams softened butter, 300 grams icing sugar, 1 teaspoon vanilla extract, 3 tablespoons of milk. You can add food coloring if you want, but today I'm just going to teach you the traditional cupcake with buttercream on it. Yes, I saw those elements on my table, and we have to determine them? Absolutely. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready to make cakes. So let's set to work. Teacher John, do we have to heat the oven first, right? That's right, at 180 degrees Celsius. And then you fill a 12 cupcake tray with cases. I'm done, teacher. Okay, next use an electric whisk beat 110 grams softened butter and 110 grams golden castor sugar together until pale and fluffy. And then whisk in two large eggs, one at a time, scraping down the sides of the bowl after each addition. Softened butter? Teacher, I forgot how to take it out of the refrigerator. So did I. Is it possible to use cold butter, Teacher John? No, we cannot. We must use softened butter for this type of cake. Why? Because such butter is capable of holding air, and the creaming process is then butter traps that air. While baking, that trapped air expands from the heat and produces a fluffy baked good. Wow, I can gain one more new knowledge about making cakes. Teacher John, does it have the difference between room temperature and softened butter? Actually, no. It depends on your room's degree. They can be interchangeable. But in the recipe, we use softened butter, right? Certainly. What do we do next, teacher? After that, add half a teaspoon vanilla extract, 110 grams self-raising flour, and a pinch of salt. Whisk until just combined, then spoon the mixture into the cupcake cases. Teacher John, at this stage, can I replace hot chocolate instead of vanilla? Of course. As I mentioned above, vanilla or chocolate depends on your taste. Even if you want the strawberry taste, you can add it. Oh, thanks, teacher. Sophie, you still want to keep the vanilla taste? That's right, I prefer vanilla to chocolate. Okay, it's time to bake. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited about this step. I like seeing cupcakes hatching during the baking process. Yes, most bakeries like this step. Okay, so bake for 15 minutes until golden brown, and a skewer inserted into the middle of each cake comes out clean. Leave to cool completely on a wire rack. Exactly 15 minutes, Teacher John? Right. If cupcakes are overbaked, they'll be burnt. Therefore, we should set an alarm. I got it. While we're waiting for baking, we are making buttercream. Firstly, whisk 150 grams softened butter until super soft, 
Then add 300 grams icing sugar, one teaspoon vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. The next step is whisking together until smooth, then beat in three tablespoons of milk. Sophie and Anna, we should start off slowly to avoid the icing sugar cloud. Remember that. I got it. Almost I whisk a mess away. <laughs> Jumping the gun. All right, we're almost finished. The final step, 15 minutes is over, so let's take those cupcakes out of the oven. If wanting to color, stir the food coloring now, spoon or pipe onto the cooled cupcakes. Fancy that. Their colors are so beautiful. So is mine. And now we will make second cakes. Guess what? Red velvet cake? Or biscuits? No, we don't make biscuits, Anna, because we did a little creamy cake. What you said is a clue for me to guess what next we will make. So what? Celebration cake? Is that right, Teacher John? Totally correct. So which taste of celebration cake do you like? Many tastes to choose from, Teacher John. Which taste do you suggest for the wedding anniversary? I suggest honey and almond layer cake, simple, elegant wedding cake, or chocolate cake. Sophie doesn't like chocolate, so I incline towards honey and almond layer cake. What about you, Sophie? Same idea as Anna, Teacher John. Well, we decide to make almond and honey layer cake then. Yes. yes. Let's cut to the chase. I'll list all ingredients that we need. 280 grams unsalted butter softened, 225 grams light muscovado, 140 grams clear honey plus 2 tablespoons, 3 medium eggs plus 4 medium egg yolks, 280 grams plain flour, 100 grams ground almonds, 1 teaspoon baking powder, 1 teaspoon vanilla extract, 125 milliliters of milk. Oh, really? So many? That's all the ingredients we need, Teacher John? Lots of ingredients. That's just for the crust. And these are for the Swiss meringue buttercream. 300 grams unsalted butter softened, 4 medium egg whites, 250 grams golden castor sugar, 2 tablespoons of clear honey. Candied almond is available, so we don't have to make it. Its stage takes a lot of time. We are all ready, Teacher John. The first step is also the longest step. We heat the oven at 180 degrees Celsius first. Now let's make the honey and almond sponges. Grease cake tin and line the bases with baking parchment. You can use an electric hand mixer to beat the butter, muscovado sugar, and 140 grams honey until pale and fluffy. Teacher John, I know the next step. What do you do next? Add the eggs and yolks, one at a time, beating after each addition until well incorporated. That's correct, well done. After that, whisk together the flour, almonds, baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Add half of the flour mixture to the butter mixture and beat until just combined. Add the vanilla and milk, continuing to beat, then add the remaining flour mixture, beating until just combined. I want to cry. Celebrating cake has many steps. Fight. We have almost done the first step. Next, divide the mixture evenly between the tins and bake for 45 to 55 minutes, or until a skewer inserted into the center of each cake comes out clean. Allow the cakes to cool for 10 minutes in their tins, then turn out onto a wire rack to cool completely. Leave the oven on for the candied almonds. Notice the time, my students. 
When do we move to the next step, teacher? Making cakes requires patience and meticulous characteristics. I'm not this kind of person. Neither am I. Even so, we just made cupcakes, not celebration cakes. No, in spite of being tired, I still want to make a celebration cake by myself. I do too. Come on, girls, you can do it. The second step is making honey syrup. Put two tablespoons honey and two tablespoons water in a small saucepan and heat for one to two minutes or until the honey has dissolved, then set it aside. Done. Then make the Swiss meringue butter cream. Using an electric hand mixer, beat the butter until pale and fluffy. Put the egg whites and sugar in a clean heatproof bowl over a pan of simmering water. Heat the mixture until the sugar has dissolved. Remove the bowl from the heat and, using an electric hand mixer, whisk for 10 minutes or until the mixture forms stiff peaks and has cold to room temperature. Next, add the butter, one to two tablespoons at a time, and beat until the mixture is smooth and creamy. Beat in the honey and transfer to a piping bag filling with a one centimeter nozzle. When do we finish, Teacher John? Making this cake takes much more time than I thought. Almost done, girls. Don't give up. Only one more step. Oh my god, eventually I almost finished this cake. Next, assembling the cake step is also simple for you. Level the sponges by cutting off the domed tops and split each sponge in half to create four layers. Fix the bottom layer to a cake board or stand with a splotch of buttercream. Brush with the honey syrup and pipe a layer of buttercream on top. Gently press the second layer on top and repeat with the remaining layers. Cover the cake with a thin layer of buttercream, then use a palette knife to scrape the sides clean. Pipe a ring of buttercream blobs around the top, or spread a thick layer with a palette knife. Decorate with candied almonds. We finish! How pretty the cake is. You helped us make two kinds of cake. I'm so thankful for you teaching us, Teacher John. Thanks a million, Teacher! It's my pleasure. And give my love to your parents and tell them happy silver wedding anniversary. Thank you so much, Teacher John. Thanks, Teacher. I'm going home. Bye-bye. Goodbye. See you soon. Bye, girls. See you. In the Beauty Salon A beauty salon is a familiar place for everyone, especially women. We can find a lot of beauty treatment services there. Let's watch the following video to see what the characters come to the beauty salon to do. Situation 1 Advice for acne treatment. Evening. How can I help you? Hi. I have some problems with my skin, you see? I'm freaking out now. I tried to pop them, but it is getting worse and worse. Could I have a look at it? Here. You have whiteheads, blackheads, and several postules. Which kind of your skin? I am not sure. Sometimes I think it's dry skin, but the nose area is oily. I see. The area with more oil is usually the T-zone, but the skin on the cheeks is dry. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So your skin is combination skin. Okay, I will advise you some products for your issues. What is your skincare routine at home? I just use a cleanser, twice a day. I also use makeup remover and toner. A simple routine. But you know the more simple, the more beautiful. I have this one for you. To treat your acne, you should use it once a day. Just spot your pimples. Okay. 
When will it have an effect? It takes around seven days, but it depends. You should change your living habits as well. Do you have any advice? You should go to sleep before 12. Staying up late is the reason for whiteheads and red spots on your skin. Noted. Thanks. Most important, don't pop the pimples. Just don't. Why not? I think it helps my skin cleaner. You can spread bacteria and have scars. Popping them just makes your skin problem worse day by day. If you want to remove them, you should come here, then our experts will help you. Remember, never attempt to pop your pimples yourself. Got it. Anything else that I should note? There are some. I will give you a skincare booklet so that you can have a deep look. That's great. I cannot remember all the things you said, though. Yes, here you are. If you need any help, you can contact our fan page or the hotline. I see. Thank you so much. Could I pay it in cash? Yes, please. Situation 2. Cosmetic Surgery Hey, look! This girl is so pretty. Let me see. Wow, how beautiful she is. But I think her nose is fake. Come on, Linda. You have to approve that it's gorgeous, though, isn't it? What do you think about cosmetic surgery? It's great! I forgot to tell you that I am going to have breast augmentation surgery next month. You're crazy. Did you think about complications? Yes, I did. Of course. I had an appointment with the doctor. Did he tell you, like, you can be left with some scars or something? He did, but you see, it's the fastest way. I'm always shy with my breasts. That is the reason I decided to do it. Come on. Small breasts are so fabulous. Look, all the models just have normal size. Even small. No, Linda. Their body is fit. They are nice. So it's not the matter. But I want to change myself. I just want to be more beautiful. Even the silicone breast prophecies can be ruptured. Sweetie, it barely happens. Maybe 3 or 5%. Let's look at the pros, not only the cons. Though I really like natural beauty, you at the moment are still beautiful in my eyes. How much is it? Around $1,500. <gasps> Jesus, it's expensive. I have an appointment to recheck on Sunday. Do you want to come with me? Absolutely, yes. I will meet him and then make you change your mind. <laughs> no way, Linda. I have my own decisions. Maybe he will give you some advice and you can do rhinoplasty or something. No way, I won't. Look, this lipstick is new. Situation 3. Body Massage Hello, I have an appointment today. Hi, can I see your name, please? My name is Anna, Anna Turner. Anna Turner, you book a body massage at 3 p.m., right? Yes. Please have a seat. I will go to prepare a room for you now. Hi, what kind of services do you offer here? Body massage. I really want something relaxing. Can you advise me some for muscle relaxation? So, would you like Swedish massage or Thai massage? I think these are suited for you today. Mm, I will have a Thai massage, please. It takes 45 minutes as usual, right? Yes, but if you want to get a mud body wrap, it will take an extra 15 minutes. 
So it's one hour. Okay, that's fine. I will leave the room for ten minutes so you can undress and put this one on. Okay. Where should I focus on? My shoulders, please. They are frozen because of sitting on the computer all day. Your skin is dry. Do you want to use a little oil? Which oil do you have? Almond and olive as usual? Yes, and we just have a new one. Rose. Mm, nah, I will use almonds. Okay, relax. Are you comfortable? Yes. Please focus more on the shoulders. Sure. We are going to finish in 15 minutes. After that, you can have a shower in the room in the right hand. Okay, I see. I feel so good. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Dialogue 4. Nail Salon. Hi, may I help you? Hi, uh, I didn't book an appointment, but I would like to get my nails done. Fingernails, toenails, or both, please? Just fingernails. Okay, take a seat and wait for me a few minutes. Is it going to take a long time? I have to be back to work at 11 a.m. No worries at all. Just five or ten minutes, then it's your turn. We have an available nail technician now. Okay. Hi, dear. Have you waited for a long time? No, I just came here. Hmm, let's see. Which nail shape do you want? I think a square or squared oval is matched with your fingernails. I still like my former shape, squared oval. Okay. First, I will soak your fingernails and remove old polishes. Then clip, file, buff, and push back the cuticles. Do you have your own nail clipper or cuticle remover? Oh, my. I have my own, but I forgot them at home, so you can use yours. Okay, have you had any pattern nails? Not yet. Can you show me some patterns of your salon, please? Let me get the catalog for you. You can take a look while I clear and shape your nails. Then let me know which one you like. Okay. Which one did you choose? I think the bluish gray and the gold rose are so nice. This one, but I want to change this red color. I don't like red. I want it bluish gray. I see. Let me apply a base coat first. Okay. Ah, I forgot. I want to have matte polish. Sure. You are so trendy. Thank you. It looks good, doesn't it? Yes, so nice, thanks. My pleasure. I'm glad that you love it. Conversations in the gym. Nowadays, more and more people go to the gym to improve health and gain a fit body. Let's watch this video and learn more about the gym. Situation 1. How to register a gym membership card. Welcome to Red Gym. I'm Michael, staff manager of Red Gym. What can I do for you, please? Hello, I want to start doing the exercise in Red Gym. Could you help me, please? Yes, we always welcome you. But firstly, you have to register a new membership card to become a member of Red Gym. Please go to the reception over here, and I will help you make a new card. So to begin with, please fill in your information in this form. If you have any questions, you can ask me anytime. Here you are. Okay, thank you. Please wait for me for some minutes. 
Done. Could you please bring me a cup of water? I am quite thirsty. Okay. By the way, please take your form to my table. I'll check it later. Thank you, Michael. Your water here. Next, let's choose a gym plan for you. Currently, our gym provides three packages. One month, six months, and one year. The price for them is $20, $100, and $180, respectively. In addition, if you choose a one-year plan, you will receive a 10% discount for another person. You can give it to a friend or someone you want to accompany. Hmm... I think I will use one-year plan, but Michael, if I'm too busy and don't go to the gym in a month, will I be lost to this month in my plan? Yes, Tom. Thus, you should go to the gym regularly to practice effectively as well as not waste your money. Your plan is one year, right? Yes, please. Okay, by the way, do you want to have a trainer to help you practice more effectively? You can select the 1v1 plan of us. How much does this plan cost? $30 per month, Tom. It's a reasonable price. Okay, add this plan to my account. So, how much money do I have to pay? Let me see. You have to pay $540 totally. Do you want to pay by cash or card? Cash, please. Okay, wait for me a while. I'll print your bill. Your card will be sent to you in three days. You can choose your trainer now and start your today practice. Have a good day with Red Jim. Thank you so much, Michael. Situation 2. Advice for Beginners. Hello. You must be Coach June? Yes, I am Coach June. You are Ben, right? I heard staff talk about you. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you too. As you may know, I haven't gone to the gym before. So, I make this appointment to ask you for some advice for beginners like me. Of course, I'll help you. But first, please tell me your motivation to start the gym. Recently, I'm often tired and easily get sick. I want to exercise to improve my health. In addition, my friends said I was fat. I hate to hear that. I want to have a fit body. To sum up, you want to be stronger and more beautiful, right? It's also the main purpose of the gym. Now, you should build a particular schedule to follow. Yes, could you give me some recommendations? With beginners like you, we should start with simple exercises. Don't try to do hard exercises. You will feel tired and give up soon. You have to practice following your plan. A good result will come after a few months. Here is your plan. I prepared it for you yesterday. I am also your trainer and help you practice effectively. Let me see. This schedule is okay. I am not busy on any day there. Besides, you have to eat healthy. It means you should eat more vegetables and drink more water. Meat and fast food are bad food for your process. You also shouldn't drink wine as well as smoke. They are very bad for your health. Okay, coach, I will try my best. If you have any questions about your practice or diet, don't hesitate to call me. My number is 339-48934. I have to go now. I have some work to do. Goodbye, and see you on the next training day. Thank you so much, June. Have a good day. Situation 3. How to have a beautiful body. Do you want to drink water? Yes, please. Thank you. My name is Tom. Nice to meet you. I'm John. You must practice in the gym for a long time. Your body is great, John. 
I don't know how I got a body like you. You are right, Tom. I've done exercise in this gym for three years. I believe that you will have a good body soon if you go to the gym regularly. Could you tell me some tips for gym people, please? I just started practicing for a week. Of course, Tom. To get a fit body soon, you should follow a schedule from the coach. I mean, it may be fairly hard at first, but don't give up. Try your best and overcome it. Please practice regularly, as I mentioned. It's the main reason for practicing successfully. What about my diet? What should I eat? Eat more vegetables, chicken breasts, and also drink more water. They will provide enough nutrition for you. You should also reduce to pork and fast food. Don't drink Coke or beer. They are so bad for your health and your body. Okay, John. Don't you mind showing me some exercise you often do in the gym? I am so curious. No problem. Let's go to the walking machine over there. I'll show you my own trick. Okay, let's do it. Situation 4. Benefits of doing exercise. Anna, you don't look well recently. Are you sick? Oh, Kelly, I often feel tired without doing anything. Besides, I can't sleep on time. It makes me feel more sad and boring. You should go to the doctor. I think they will help you get well soon. I met a doctor last week. He gives me some medicine, but I don't think they affect me. I think it may not be an illness. I used to be like you, but I have no longer got sick for a long time. It may be because you do not act on your body regularly. You spend almost all day at work and do not do the exercise at home. You are right, Kelly. I used to go to the gym before, but now I don't have enough time. You should go to the gym as before. I practice in there regularly and I feel stronger every day. My body is fit. Going to the gym is an effective way to improve your health. Really, Kelly? That sounds great. Okay, I'll arrange my time to go to the gym. By the way, where is the gym you are practicing in? The Red Gym. It's near your house. Good. Let's go there this afternoon. I can't wait anymore. Okay, Anna. I'll go with you. Thank you so much, Kelly. You're welcome. At the station. Let's watch the following video to learn what you should say to ticket agents to get information about routes, schedules, and ticket prices. Dialogue 1. Buying train tickets. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Amtrak Station. How may I help you? Hello. The lady at the information desk said I could buy train tickets here. Yes, that's correct. Where would you like to go, sir? I want to get to Philadelphia. Okay, I just want to confirm a bit. Do you mean Philadelphia City in Pennsylvania? Yes, that's the one. Great, got it. How many tickets do you need and what time do you expect to leave? I only need one ticket for myself and I need to get there before 3 p.m. It takes three hours to get there, so I'll find you a ticket with the departure time by noon. That'd be great, thanks. Our train offers two seating options, coach and business class. Which one do you prefer? I'm good with coach seats. Okay, I found you a seat. This train leaves at 10.30 a.m. The ticket will be $80. Would you like to get round-trip tickets? Round-trip tickets are only $150 if you buy them now. Yes, I'll get round-trip tickets, please. I want to get back here on Thursday afternoon. Would a ticket on Thursday at 1 p.m. be good for you? Yes, that's perfect. Let me confirm your ticket details with you. You have round-trip coach class tickets to Philadelphia, leaving this station at 10.30 a.m. today. 
and returning from Philadelphia on Thursday the 22nd at 1 p.m. Is everything correct? Yes, everything's correct. I'll pay for the tickets in cash. Thank you. I received your payment. Here are your tickets. Thanks for using Amtrak's service. Great, thank you. Dialogue 2. Buying Bus Tours Hello. Good afternoon, miss. How can I help you? I just came to New York today. I've never been here before, so I'd like to get a feel of the whole city. Do you have any bus or any tours that go around the city? Yes, we do. First, could I ask you several questions to recommend you the best option for your needs? Of course, go ahead. Are you going with anyone else? Yes, there are two of us. My friend will join me tomorrow. How many days are you staying in New York? We're staying here for four days. We'll be leaving on Sunday afternoon. Okay, what kind of places would you guys want to visit? Hmm... We would like to visit some famous tourist attractions, such as the Empire State Building, Times Square, and Central Park. We're also very interested in enjoying New York City's most iconic food, like hot dogs, smoked salmon bagels, New York-style pizza and cheesecake, etc. Basically, we want to experience the must-do activities in New York for the first-time visitors. You know? I see what you mean. If so, I'd like to recommend our Welcome to New York option. It's a combo of 15 bus trips to famous New York restaurants, as well as top-rated attractions in New York City, including Times Square, Rockefeller Center, Central Park, Empire State Building, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Here's a detailed schedule and list of destinations for this bus trip combo. Let me know if that's something you're looking for. It sounds exactly like what we want. The price is within our budget as well. We'll get two combos, please. Dialogue 3. Train to the airport. Good morning, ma'am. How may I help you? Hello, good morning. Um, I'm trying to get to the airport. Do you know which train I should take? Which airport are you trying to get to? Is it JFK Airport? Oh, sorry. I forgot to tell you. Not to JFK. I want to get to the Newark Airport in New Jersey. Just to confirm, it is Newark Liberty International Airport, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, are you the only one traveling? Yes, I only need a ticket for myself. When would you like to depart? July the 8th, any time is fine, but I don't want to leave too late at night. Okay, I got it. Would you like to get a one-way ticket or a round-trip ticket? Just a one-way ticket, please. I'm moving to New Jersey for a new job. Oh, best of luck to you in your new job. Oh, thank you. Please give me a second... Alright, I found you a ticket. The train will depart from 30th Street Station at 2pm on July the 8th. It will arrive at Newark Airport after nearly two hours at 3.50pm. That sounds good to me. How much is the ticket? It'll be $110 in total. How would you like to pay? Do you accept credit cards? Yes, we do. Thank you. Here is your ticket. This is the time and the gate information. Um, one question, please. Could you also tell me how I can get to the train station? Of course. There are many subways that go directly to 30th Street Station. You can take the SEPTA Blue Line subway from Center City. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome, miss. Dialogue 4. Cab to the airport. 
Hello, excuse me? Yes? Do you know when the next bus will come? Which bus do you take? Ah, uh, I'm taking the West Green bus that goes to the airport. Oh, the West Green bus. There's only a bus every 30 minutes. A West Green bus just left five minutes ago, so may have to wait another 25 minutes for the next bus. Oh god, I'm gonna be late. What time is your flight? My flight is in an hour. Oh, you may not make it in time if you wait for the bus. Maybe you should catch a cab. It only takes about 30 minutes to get to the airport if you go by cab. Yeah, I think I should catch a cab. Thank you so much for the info. Taxi! Taxi! Good morning, sir. Hello. Will you please open the trunk for me? Of course. Let me put your luggage in the trunk for you. JFK Airport, please. Okay. How are you today? Good, thanks. You? I'm good, thank you. Are you in a hurry? Yes, I am, actually. I need to catch a flight in an hour, so please go as fast as you can. Okay, I understand. Please put on your seatbelt. Right, I forgot. The traffic is not too good today, but don't worry. I'll take the highway. We can get there in 20, 25 minutes. Great, thank you. We're here. The total price is $56. Please keep the change. Thank you for the tip, sir. Don't forget your luggage. <gasps> right. Thank you so much, buddy. My pleasure, sir. Safe flight. At the mall. A group of friends, Lisa, Andrea, and Alex, are discussing to hang out at the mall. Watch the video and see what they will do at the mall. Yeah, it has been a long time since we had a day off like today. What are we going to do? Stay home and watch movies. I'm pretty tired. Staying at home is a waste of a day off. We gotta go play. Right. Okay, I'll follow you guys. So where do you guys think we should go? How about going for coffee? Yeah, that's good. But we have plenty of time. What do we do then? Going to buy clothes to prepare for summer? Good idea. Let's pick a place where we won't have to move too much. Do you want to go to the mall? Great. We can both hang out at the coffee shop and go shopping there. What do people do at the mall? A lot of things. Sell and buy clothes, goods, books, shoes, watches. And a lot of stores. Clothes stores, jewelry stores, entertainment area, a cinema, electric store, book stores. Okay, let's go. This mall opens at 9 a.m. and closes at 11 p.m. I think we should stay here until 5 p.m. and have dinner after that. We also have dinner at the restaurant here. Good! There is a new pizza restaurant opening in the mall. Maybe it's on the fourth floor and they're having a discount. Great idea! Check its location. Okay, I'll check it then. What will we do first? Go to the cinema! A blockbuster is playing. The cinema is on the fifth floor. I've wanted to see this movie ever since I saw the trailer. I agree with Andrea. It is rare that we can watch a movie in theaters. We're busy, so we watch movies at home. I'll go ahead and buy tickets and popcorn, so you can have time to walk around and buy some things. Thanks. 
Andrea and I will go for a walk and see you in about 15 minutes. Okay, see you guys later. Lisa, do you want to go to the cosmetics store? I want to buy a makeup remover. Okay, I'll buy some masks. My skin is probably quite dry due to the weather. Need to moisturize it. This jewelry store looks great, right? Yes, it's one of those most luxurious brands, but it is really beautiful. Come and see it. I like this necklace so much, but it costs a fortune. I don't have enough money. It's so amazing. Maybe five years later I will have it. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, Andrea, what is that? Where? Over there! Ah, it is bowling. Have you ever tried it? Not yet. How about calling Alex to bowl later? He's really good at this game. He can teach you to play. After the movie? Yes, we have plenty of time. Okay, good. And then we can play mini golf. It's next to the bowling alleys. Cool, I love it! Hey, Alex! Hey, come here. I bought the tickets and popcorn. Cola as well. The movie will show in about 10 minutes. Come up here. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. What do you think about this movie? I think it's good. I especially love the soundtrack. I'll set it as my ringer. I really like the content of the movie. Very emotional. Yes, I agree with you. Ah, Alex. Do you want to play bowling? Oh my god, of course. I love it so much. Let's go to the amusement area. Lots of games there. Let's go! Oh, this is the gym. Last year I signed up to practice here. Seems like my training card is still valid, but I'm too busy to come here to practice every day. Wow, you went to the gym every day? But since I changed houses, I've been too busy to go to the gym here. Same. I often go to the spa in this mall. Despite being busy, I've come once every two weeks. Hey, next time you come, call me, please. Okay, sure. And my brother sells televisions, laptops, etc. at the electronics store on the third floor. Oh, really? Andrea, at home you said you wanted to go shopping to buy clothes. Yes, that's right. Here, this clothes store is famous brands. The price is also affordable. Great! Come here. And it can be suitable for both boys and girls. Unisex style? Yes. This skirt over there looks good on you. Try it. Okay, wait for me. Wow, it fits perfectly. Thanks, Alex. Alex, what do you want to buy? I want to buy clothes. A blue t-shirt and my wardrobe full of black and white. That's why people at school call you B&W. Just kidding. Hey, I feel a bit tired. Yes, me too. We walked around and played too much. I need to sit down and rest for a while. Come to the coffee shop. It tastes good. But I think we should have dinner first, then we can go to the coffee shop. Yeah, okay. Did you check the location of the pizza restaurant, Alex? Oh, I forgot. Here's the map, you can check it. Yes, it's on the fourth floor. Lisa and Andrea, can you go with me to the bookstore? I want to buy a gift for my sister's birthday. Yes, sure. I think I also should buy some things for my mother. Do you recommend anything? Book, like me. Or if your mother doesn't like books, you should buy a pair of shoes for her. 
So we can go to the shoe store together. Yes, maybe I will find one that I can buy. Ah, I forgot! Shall we take a photo together in the lobby on the first floor? We haven't had a picture together for a long time. Good idea. The view is not light enough, I think. We should take pictures of the statue on the second floor. Hey, how about taking a photo at the coffee shop we'll go to? The view is perfect. Okay, good. Really tired today, but I'm glad I did a lot of things at the mall with you guys. Look, the photo we took at the cafe is really nice. Great. I look handsome. Hey! hey. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Lisa, what's the matter? Oh dear. I forgot to buy bread and milk for breakfast tomorrow at the department store. You can go to the store near our house. Yeah, maybe so. There will be more discounts at the mall. Let's go together next time we have free time. Sure! Conversations at the Library Let's watch the following video to learn how to get a library card and borrow books. Dialogue 1. Getting a Library Card Good morning, girls. Welcome to Andrew Public Library. May I help you with anything? Good morning. We would like to borrow some books. Do we need to have a library card to do that? No, you can definitely still borrow books here without having a library card. Oh, we didn't know that. Sorry, it's our first time here. No worries. Anyway, I'd still recommend that you guys get a library card because it will give you a lot of benefits. For example, you'll be able to borrow more books for a longer period of time and gain access to many digital resources. On top of all that, applying for a library card is free of charge. Wow! We'd like to get a library card for each of us then. How do we do that? Okay, I'll need to ask you something first. How old are you guys and where do you live? We're 14. We both live in this city. Thanks for letting me know. I need to ask because we can only provide the cards for residents of this state that are over 12 years old. Please fill in our card application forms here and give them back to me when you're done. Okay, thank you. Dialogue 2. Asking for information. Here are your cards. Please check all the information on the cards and let me know if there's anything that needs correction. Thank you. Everything seems correct. My card looks good too. Thank you. Great. Do you have any questions about the library? I'd be happy to answer your questions. We actually do have a few. It's our first time coming here, so we don't know much about the library. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Go ahead. When does the library open and when does it close? The library opens at 9 a.m. and closes at 9 p.m. We close earlier at 5 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. Oh, okay. Does the library work on the weekend? We close on Sunday only. Oh, I have a question. If we want to do homework together, and discuss something out loud. Is there any place we can go to in the library? Yes, there are rooms on the third floor where you guys can work and talk inside. That's awesome. Dialogue 3. Finding Books Excuse me, could you please tell me where the literature books and psychology books are? 
Of course. Literature books and psychology books are all on the second floor. Oh, really? I've been walking back and forth on the second floor for over ten minutes. But I don't know why I still can't find the books I'm looking for. Are you new to the library? Yes, I am. It's actually my first time visiting the library. Let me take you on a quick tour around the library, then. I'll also help you locate the books you need. That would be great. Thank you so much. On the first floor, there are reading tables, magazines, and brochures of all kinds, and e-books. Literature and humanities books will be on the second floor. On the shelves on the left, when you walk up, those stairs over there. Ah, I see. You can also use the computer there to search for the code and location of the books you want to find. I didn't know that. Thank you for the tour. You're most welcome. Dialogue 4. Library Card Fees Hi, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. How can I help you? We would like to borrow some history books and some language learning CDs. Sure. Do you have library cards? We do. Here they are. Thanks. Oh, you already reached the end of your free month of membership. So you'll need to pay the membership fee for your cards in order to borrow books and use other services at the library. Oh, right. The librarian who helped us get our library cards did tell us that the cards are only free for the first month. Sorry, we totally forgot about that. No, it's fine. And yes, after the first month, you need to pay a membership fee of $5 per month. If you want to pay for six months, the fee will only be $25 in total. Hmm, we come here very often to buy our books and CDs here. We will pay for six months. All right, how would you like to pay? We'll pay in cash. Here you are. Thank you. I've updated your library cards. You're good to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dialogue 5. Requirements to borrow books. Hello. Good morning. How can I help you? We would like to borrow these geography books to do research for our class assignment. Sure. May I borrow your library cards? Yes, here. And here is mine. Let me note down what books you borrow. Okay, please take your cards back. Thank, Thank you. you. You can borrow these books for two weeks. Please return the books to the library on or before their due date on August 30th. If you fail to return any materials on time, you will be charged 50 cents for each late day. If your fine gets over $15, we may not be able to lend you any library materials for a period of time. We see. We'll return the books on time. That'd be great. And please also remember to handle the books you borrow with care and keep them in their original condition. You may not draw or write in them. You'll be fined a fee if the books you borrow are damaged. Please let me know if you have any questions. No, we're clear on this. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. Dialogue 6. Returning Damaged Books <laughs> morning. Hello, miss. May I help you today? I'm here to return the books I borrowed, but, but, uh... What's the matter? Is something wrong? Yesterday, I accidentally left my books on the table, and so my cat made a scratch on the cover of one of the books. I'm really sorry. Ah, okay. Can I see the book? I borrowed three books, and this is the one that got a scratch. Okay. 
So the scratch is not too big, which is a good thing, but I'm afraid we still have to charge you a fine according to the library's policies. I understand. How much do I need to pay then? The processing fee is $5, and the fine for damaged covers is $5, so you'll need to pay $10 in total. Okay, here you are. I'm sorry again for being so careless. Don't worry too much. Thank you for letting me know of the problem right away. Try to be more careful next time. I will. Thank you. At the hotel. Staying at a hotel is an exciting experience for many people. Let's watch the following video to learn how to book a room and ask for help at a hotel. Dialogue 1. Booking a room. Hello, this is Moven Pick Hotel. How may I help you? Hello, I'll arrive in Bangkok next week for a business trip. Do you still have any vacant rooms? I would like to make a reservation for three nights on October 19th, 20th, and 21st. May I ask how many people you are booking the room for, and what type of room would you like to get? I only need a single room for myself. Okay, please give me a second. I'll check for you. Great, thanks. We still have a single room on those days. The price is $52 for a night. Does that price include taxes and fees? If all fees are included, the price will be $60 a night. Okay, what's included in the price? You'll have free breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and lounge access. That sounds great. I'd like to book this room, please. May I have your name? Sophia Streep. I'll send you the deposit right now. Can I pay for the rest when I get to the hotel? Of course. That'd be no problem. Awesome. Thank you. Dialogue 2. Checking in. Good morning. Welcome to Moven Pick Hotel. Hello. I already booked a room over the phone last week. I would like to check in, please. Sure. May I have your name, please? Sophia Streep. Ah, uh, yes. You made the reservation for a single room for three nights. Yes, that's correct. May we see your ID, please? Here's my passport. Thank you. I already paid the deposit. I'd like to pay for the rest by credit card. Of course. Please wait a moment. Everything's all good. Here's your credit card and room card. Your room is on the third floor. Our bellman Harris over there will help you carry your luggage and show you the way to your room. Great. Thank you. If you have any issues or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to call the reception desk. We hope you'll enjoy your stay at Moven Pick Hotel. Okay, thank you so much. Dialogue 3. Requesting a wake-up call. Hello, I am Sophia. I'm the guest staying in room 318. Hello, ma'am. Can I help you with anything? Yes, I have an important business meeting tomorrow morning that I cannot miss. I already set up my cell phone alarm, but can I request a wake-up call just in case? We can certainly do that. What time do you want the call? My meeting is at 8 a.m. I am a heavy sleeper, so I think I'll need two calls. One at 6.30 a.m. and another one at 6.45 a.m. Okay, I noted that. Please expect your wake-up calls at 6.30 and 6.45 a.m. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, I'd also like to have my clothes ironed for my meeting tomorrow. Certainly. I can ask a housekeeping staff to come to your room in 10 minutes to get your clothes. 
Your clothes will be ironed and returned to you tonight. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Glad I can help. Dialogue 4, Asking for Help Hello, is, is this the reception? I need help. Yes, this is the reception. What's wrong? How can we help? I think there's a mouse in my room. Please come help. Could you tell me what room you're in? I'm in room 318. Okay, don't worry. We'll come right away. Hello, ma'am. Sorry for disturbing you. You said that there's a mouse in this room? Yes, thank God you're here so quick. I think I heard a mouse making noises somewhere in the room. From which place did you hear the noise? Was it from the ceiling? No, I think it was from that corner, between the walls or something. Okay, let us check then. Ah, we found the problem. Did you manage to catch the mouse? Well, no. We've checked very carefully, and it turns out that the noise comes from a kid's toy of a family staying in the room next door. Oh, I'm so relieved. It sounds like an actual mouse. <laughs> yes, it does sound like a mouse, but there's no mouse there. Don't worry. Thank you for your help. You're very welcome. Enjoy your afternoon. Dialogue 5. Asking for the Wi-Fi. Good evening. How may I help you? Hi, I'm staying in room 318. I need to use the Wi-Fi to work on my laptop. Is there free Wi-Fi in the hotel? Yes, we do provide free Wi-Fi access. How can I access it? I found a Wi-Fi connection, but it asks for a password. Oh, yes. We don't offer a public network for security reasons. You can find a username and password for your own use on the wall. Where is it? I can't see anything. The username and password are written on a piece of paper near the night table. Ah, I found that piece of paper. Great! Can your laptop connect to that network all right? Yes, my laptop is connected. The Wi-Fi connection seems pretty strong. Thank you! It's my pleasure. Is there anything else? Nothing for now, thanks. Dialogue 6. Asking for Recommendation Good morning. How may I help you? Hello. I would like to ask for some food recommendations, if that's possible. Certainly. What food have you tried in Bangkok? I only have two days left here, and yesterday I was busy with a business meeting all day, so I haven't been able to go out much. I see. What types of food or restaurants do you like? I'd like to try as many signature dishes here as possible but I'm not sure where to go and how to get there. Actually, our hotel offers a food tour that will take you to the most famous local restaurants and street vendors. Is that something you're interested in? Oh, how long is that tour? It's only within a day. There are two options, a three-hour tour and a half-day tour. What about the price? It's $30 for the shorter tour and $60 for the half-day tour. That doesn't sound too bad. I'll book the half-day tour, please. Okay. Um, may I get your name, please? Sophia Streep. I'm in room 318. What time will the tour start? It will start at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., or 6 p.m. Which time is best for you? 8 a.m. is good. Perfect. Our tour guide will wait for you at the hotel lounge. Please come down before 7.50 a.m. Okay, I will. Thanks. Dialogue 7. 
Dialogue 7. Luggage Storage Hello, how are you, ma'am? How may I help you today? I'm fine, thanks. I'd like to ask if the hotel can hold my luggage after checkout. We certainly can do that. How long would you need to store your luggage? That's awesome. I have to check out at noon today, but my flight is not until 6 p.m. So I'd like to do some last-minute shopping in the meantime. Can I have my luggage here until 4 p.m.? I only have one carry-on suitcase. That should be no problem. We can help store your luggage for a few hours. Could you please leave your name and contact so that we can contact you if we need to? Of course. Let me write my name and phone number down. Here you are. Okay, we've got it. Feel free to let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. That'd be all. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. In the drugstore. In the drugstore, we buy a lot of things, from daily necessities to medicines for certain diseases. Watch the video and see what people buy at the drugstore. Situation 1. Another drug. Good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. I have a prescription from Dr. Alex about my headache. Please give me the drug for it. Okay, let me see it. Here it is. Okay, wait for some minutes. I will take them for you. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Mary. Sorry, but our pharmacy doesn't have bag-type headache medicine as your doctor prescribes. We ran out of it for three days. We only have two out of three that the doctor prescribed. What a pity. Yes, sorry about that, but you can have another type. What is that? These days, people prefer a headache paste to a pill. Headache paste is more convenient for you. Is that as effective as pills? Of course. They are the same function. They also have similar headache treatment ingredients. They are different only in the form of use, patches and pills. Sounds good. But does it work when I use it with two other drugs? No problem. I am sure it is no different with the doctor's prescription. If you ask your doctor about this, he will agree with me too. I guarantee. Okay, take it for me. And can you tell me how I should use it? Yes, very easy. You don't have to pay attention to use it on time. Whenever you have a headache, cut and stick a small patch on your temple area. It can reduce the pain. Thank you so much. Please put them in the bag for me. How much is this? Nine dollars, please. Here you go. Have a nice day. You too. Situation 2. Buy things at a drugstore. Hello, how can I help you? Hello, I need some small stuff. Yes, what are they? I can take them for you. First, I need a bottle of shampoo. Do you need a large or mini size? I think a small size is enough. I just use it during my trip for one week. Okay, what else? A toothbrush. What color? Pink, please. No, give me two. Pink and black, please. I buy them for my husband. Okay, what about toothpaste? No, I don't need it. At home, I still have small tubes of toothpaste. They are a bonus when I buy the larger one. They're useful now. Is there anything else you need? Let me think. I need to prepare a lot of things for the trip. Ah, give me a pair of face towels. Okay, and you can also use cotton pads. They are more convenient to carry and use when traveling. That sounds good, so I'll take them. What kind do you want? 120 pieces a bag or bigger? Um, bigger please. If I don't use it up during the trip, I can take it home and use it. 
Good idea. Is there anything else? No, that will be all. Thank you so much. How much are they? Your bill is twenty dollars. Here it is. Thanks. Thank you. Situation three: Drugs for cough and runny nose. <coughs> Hey, Mary, what's wrong? You look tired. Are you under the weather? Hi, Jack. I feel sick. I think I have a cold. What are your symptoms? Cough and runny nose. Yesterday, I just woke up and I had a frog in my throat. That's awful. You should buy drugs to end this immediately. Yes, you're right. Hi. How can I help you? Yes, I think I have a cold. I've been suffering a cough and runny nose for two days. Have you had a fever? Actually, no. My temperature is stable. Do you think I caught a cold due to the change in weather? I think so. A lot of people also came to buy medicine today because of a cold. Yes, weather like this makes people so tired. Okay, I see. You should use cough syrup. You will need to drink this three times a day within one hour before or after the meal. For three to four days, your cough will be treated. Great. How about the runny nose? Yes, I suggest you should use flu medicine. It relieves symptoms, including cough and runny nose. Good. But is there anything I need to notice about when taking these drugs? Yes, you need to carefully check the drug's content to know if it contains any chemical substance that's you're allergic to. Okay. Anything else? Well, you also need to remember to take drugs regularly, or else its function will not be as effective as it should be. Twice a day, after lunch and dinner. Does it have any side effects? I think it can make you a bit sleepy. Okay, no problem. If you have a fever, come back to me and take fever tablets. Okay, I'll remember. Thanks. You're welcome. Situation four: Drugs for diarrhea and vomiting. <laughs> Pharmacist, you look so tired. What is the matter? Well, I have been suffering from diarrhea and vomiting about three hours ago. I feel so exhausted because of this. I just walked some steps and was ready to drop. Have you eaten anything strange before? Yes, I ate some chocolate in the morning. Okay, I see. These symptoms seem to be very serious. You may have food poisoning or some digestive problems. That's bad. So what should I do to end this? Based on your symptoms, I will write a prescription for you. You need to take these anti-diarrhea drugs twice a day before lunch and dinner. It will cure diarrhea, and you will feel better. Also, you need to stick with soft food such as porridge, noodles, cereal, and especially drinking water for rehydration. Okay, I'll remember. But how do I deal with the vomiting? In order to cure the vomiting, you will need to eat the food as I mentioned before, and also stay away from fried or sweets because they can make your symptoms worse. Does it have any side effects on my stomach? I have a stomach ache. Don't worry about that. It is safe for use. Okay, I see. And you should pay more attention to your eating habits. You should not eat strange foods because they may not be suitable for your body. You may be poisoned. Of course. Thanks for your useful advice. Farm animals. Today we will study farm animals. Let's watch this video and learn how to describe an animal. Situation one. Have you ever been to a farm? Hi, 
Hi, Ben. What are you doing? Hello, Tim. I'm reading a science book. It write about popular animals around us. That sounds interesting. Could I lend it for a bit? Of course, Tim. Here you are. Thank you, Ben. By the way, have you ever been to a farm? No, I have never visited a farm. How about you, Tim? Yes, Ben. I have come to a farm many times. My father just took me to my uncle's farm last week. Wow, you are so lucky, Tim. I always want to visit a farm in real life. Are there many animals on your uncle's farm? Yes, Ben. It's summer now, so that my uncle feeds a little more animals on his farm. Can you tell me some of them? Of course, Ben. Do you want to know about the sheep in there? Yes, please. My uncle has a flock of sheep. There are about twenty sheep. Wow! How do they look like? They have white and thick fur. Their fur will be collected to make clothing or blankets. Are they big or small? They are quite big, Ben. I also saw two dairy cattle. They are bigger than sheep. Plus, they have black and white fur. Have you drunk their milk? Hmm, I haven't. But I may try it next time. Is there any chickens or ducks? Yes, there are a lot of chickens. They lay a lot of eggs. This farm is so great. Do you want to visit my uncle's farm next week? I'll go there with my dad. Yes, I'd love to. Let me ask my dad first. Okay, Ben. This trip will be exciting. I have to go out now. Goodbye, Ben. Bye, bye, Tim. See you next time. Situation two: Animals on the farm. Look, Mom! What a cute rabbit! Yes, John. Do you love rabbits? Of course, Mom. They are small. They have white fur and two pink eyes. Plus, their tail is very short. They look so lovely. Your grandfather feeds many rabbits on his farm. Have you seen them? Yes, I see, Dad. I love them so much. Do you love any other animals on this farm? I also love the cow too. Grandfather keeps it in the cage at the end of the farm. Its hair is brown. It is very big, and it eats a lot of grass. Grandfather let him out every afternoon. It is quite shy. Dad, does my grandfather feed pigs? Yes, son. He feeds many pigs. Your grandfather let the pigs eat too much. They are too fat. The pig sound is very loud. They scream every morning. Are they black or white, Dad? They have white fur and pink skin. They also have a pink nose. Their tail is very short and curly. They are bathed by Grandpa every day to stay healthy and clean. Oh, they are so cute. How about the black horse? Do you love him? Of course, Dad. He looks so strong. Besides, he runs so fast. Yes, John. I rode him when I was young. He is very smart too. It was easy to ride him in a long way. I want to ride him too. Could you take me to your grandfather's farm on the weekend? Okay, John. I'll do it. Thanks, Dad. I love you. Situation three: The first time Ben visits the farm. Wow, this farm is so big. It is the first time I see a big farm like this. Yes, it is enormous. Let's go and explore your uncle's farm, Tim. Okay then. Look, Tim, is that a rabbit? You're right. It is a rabbit. Oh, its hair is brown. I didn't know that rabbit fur includes this color. 
On this farm, my uncle feeds both white and brown rabbits. Keep going and I'll show you where white rabbits are in. That sounds great, Tim. I'm so excited now. Ben, can you see a dog over there? Yes, I see it. This dog is so cute. I love its yellow fur. I want to touch it. Yes, you can pet it whenever you want. Do you see those ducks in the lake over there? They are so lovely too. Wow, there are so many ducks. Can they swim all day? No, they just swim for a little time. After that, they walk on the grass and play. Oh Ben, it's time for lunch now. We should go to my uncle's home and have lunch. You can continue to visit our farm in the afternoon. Okay Tim, let's go eat something. Situation 4. The interesting trip on the farm. Finally, we arrive at the farm. I'm so excited now. I feel quite tired now, but I still want to go into the farm. Let's get started, everyone. Dad, what is that woman doing? Hmm, let me see. She is picking the apples. I want to eat an apple. Could we stay here and wait until she finishes her job? We may buy some apples to eat. That's a good idea. Okay, we take a rest here for a while. Look, a horse is running over there. He runs so fast. I see him too. He is so beautiful and big. Oh no, I see a dog. It is coming. I feel so scared. Don't worry, son. I think this dog will not bite you. He just wants to welcome you. I think we should go now. We can come back here and buy apples later. Yes, I forgot. We have to meet the farmer. Dad, there are many sheep. One, two, three. I can't count on them. Their fur is so beautiful. I love sheep. Who knows how the sheep sound? <laughs> Here, I can see the farmer. He is waving at us. Hello, everyone. You look quite tired. Yes, we have walked for a long time. I have some carrots for you. You can eat them or feed them to the horses. They love carrots so much. Thank you. We have food here. We'll use this carrot for horses. Okay. Let's enjoy the fresh air here. I hope you love it. Of course. We will feed the horses now. I'm so grateful to you. We, we thank, thank you. You. <laughs> you are welcome. Fast food. Fast food is hot food that is served very quickly and can be taken away to be eaten in the street. Recently, fast food is more and more common. Let's watch this video to learn some vocabulary for fast food. Situation 1 Hey, I'm so hungry. What time is it? It's 12.10 already. We forgot lunchtime. What should we order today? I don't know. Recently, I dislike eating. Do you want to come to the MC restaurant? Long time no eat fast food. It sounds good. Jane, do you want to go with us? Okay, that's fine. Let's go. It's late now. There are some new dishes, aren't there? Cool, I will try a new one. I would like the shrimp hamburger with chili sauce. What about you? Combo C, pasta and chips, please. Fried chicken set B and cola, please. How long will it take? 
It'll take about 15 minutes. I will go to the counter to order. Not too long. When was the last time we ate at MC? Not sure. Last Monday? No, I think it was Tuesday. Whatever, then it's last week. It felt like it was a month ago. The food is coming. Enjoy your meal. Bon appetit! Enjoy. Ah, it's so delicious. I love chicken so, so much. Hey, Anne. You look so happy. What happened? Nothing much. MC has a new combo. It's really tasty. Tomorrow, you should try it. Fast food? What fast food did you order? Fried chicken set B. It's the new one. Ah, and cola, absolutely. It's normal chicken, but sauces are the highlight. I think sauce is made from chilies, peppers, basil, and mayonnaise. Cool, but I think it's not good for our health. Most fast food contains high level of added sugar. You will eat more calories. Then regular eating fast food can lead to problems with obesity. I understand, but you know... Yes, I know. It's really delicious. It's one option sometimes. Just sometimes. Thanks for your review. I will try your suggestion tomorrow. It's time. Work hard. Bye. Bye. Situation 2 Hey babe, I just arrived in New York. What are you doing? Yes, remember to go to the post office. They called me yesterday to remind me about our bills in May. Yes, I see. I will buy some presents for you, honey. I'm so hungry now. I will have some food. Call you later. Bye, love you. Please leave me at the MC restaurant. Okay, sir. Wow, it's bigger than ours. Hope that quality is good as well. Hello, what can I help you with, sir? I would like to order something. What are your signature dishes here? Would you like chicken, hamburger, or pasta? Hamburger, please. Today we have shrimp, beef, chicken, and fish hamburger. You can choose a side of cheese or double cheese, especially special cheese. Can you suggest to me some combo with shrimp hamburger? With shrimp hamburgers, we have combo S1 and S2. S1 includes a shrimp hamburger, fries, and a drink. S2 includes a burger, a chicken wing, and an ice cream. Oh, it's hard to choose. I love both chicken and fries. Hmm. I'd like the S2 and fries, please. Small, medium, or large? Small, please. Would you like chili sauce or ketchup? Both, please. Is that for here or to go? For here. Your total is $5. Please keep the number tag, take a seat, and wait for us a few minutes. Thank you. Thanks so much. Enjoy your meal. When you finish, you can come to our order bar to get your ice cream. Thank you. Thanks. Can I have more ketchup, please? We have a refill station there. You can fill it up by yourself. Oh, I see. Thank you. Situation 3 Alex, do you want to run one more round over there? That way? Okay, let's go. Hey, that is MC. It is a new one in this street, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Are you wanting to try? Honestly, I'm really hungry now. Really? Fast food after doing exercise? It sounds crazy, but I'm in. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to MC Restaurant. Do you need a little time to decide, or would you like to order now? Could, Could we, we see, see a, a menu, menu please? please? Here's the menu. 
Let me see. Do you have any discount for today? Unfortunately not. We just have some discount vouchers for dinner time. If next time you come at dinner time, I will show you some. You serve pasta, don't you? Yes, you can look for it on page two. We have two best sellers are basil pasta and tomato cream pasta. I will have tomato cream pasta, please. Large or small? Large, please. What would you like to drink? I will have a Coke. Would you like ice with that? No ice, please. Ah, I forgot. My pasta is without pepper, please, and with extra cream. Okay, noted. What about you? Do you have veggie burgers? Absolutely. You can find them on page five. Let me see. Hmm. I will have number two with a side of mashed potatoes, and I'd also like to get a side of baked beans. Could I get that without gravy? Yes, sure. Mashed potatoes without gravy. What would you like to drink? Could I have a Coke Zero? Coke Zero? Sure. Ice or without ice? Do you want to order anything else? No ice and ice cream, please. Pardon me? Ice cream? Yes, I will have number two, a Coke Zero without ice, and ice cream. Ice cream for breakfast? Are you serious? Absolutely, just because I'm so hungry. We have some flavors here. Which one do you want? Chocolate, please. Okay, so you will have a tomato cream pasta without pepper and extra cream. A combo, too, with a side of mashed potatoes and a side of baked beans, a Coke without ice, a Coke Zero, and an ice cream. Is that right? It'll take about 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This food is best eaten while hot. Please enjoy your meal. Thank, thank you. you. That will be $15.30, please. Please bring this bill to the checkout to pay for your meal after enjoying it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Not at all. Enjoy. Enjoy. Hi, how was everything today? All good. I love your pasta. Will that be card or cash? Buy cash, please. Here is your change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you again soon. Opposite adjectives. Opposite adjectives are used a lot in life, not only in daily life, but also in work and study. Let's watch the video together to learn new opposite adjectives and review old words that you already know. Situation 1. Common opposite adjectives. What is the opposite of? Good morning, class. I will call the roll before we start. First, is Tom here? Here I am, teacher. Luna? Yes, teacher. How about Mary? Hello, teacher. Hi, Kate. I see you there. Do you know where is Steve? Steve hasn't come to class yet. I'm here, teacher. Sorry I'm late. You're always. Steve, take your seat. We will start a new lesson. Today, we will learn opposite adjectives. Opposite adjectives contain words that have a negative meaning relationship between them whose spellings are different from each other and their meanings are completely different from each other. What is it, teacher? I don't understand. I'll give you an example that's easier to understand. Do you remember the story of the turtle and the rabbit I told you last week? Yes, yes teacher. teacher. Rabbit runs very fast and turtle runs very... Slow. Yes. So, what is the opposite of fast? Slow. I understood. Fast and slow are opposite adjectives. Wonderful, Luna. 
Did you understand, class? Yes, teacher. Now I will give you an adjective. You will guess the opposite of it. Whoever answers correctly, I will give one candy. The more correct answers, the more candies. First, what is the opposite of fat? Tom? It is thin. Fat and thin are opposite adjectives. Good. One candy for you. Next, what is the opposite of strong? Me. I am Luna, teacher. It's weak. Strong and weak. Very good. And what is the opposite of rich? Rich and poor, teacher. So smart, Kate. So what is the opposite of short? Tall and short. My brother is very tall and I am short. Very creative, Mary. Mary will have two candies because Mary gave us an example for short and tall. Now, new rule. We will take a pair of opposite adjectives and an example of it. For example, hot and cold. Summer is very hot and winter is very cold. Young and old. My grandfather is old and I am young. Easy and difficult. Literature is easy, but math is difficult. I think math is easy, too. Yes, Tom, it's just an example. Big and small. My house is big, but Lou's house is small. Who is Lou, Luna? She is my dog. Her name is same same my name. Happy and sad. If it's a sunny day, I'll be happy. But if it rains, I'll feel sad because I can't go out. Try to find something you can play indoors. Rainy days will be fun too. And Steve? Mm. How about beautiful and ugly? Uh, butterflies are beautiful, caterpillars are ugly. Good, Steve. Would you want to give one more example? Uh, smart and stupid, clean and dirty, fast and slow. You are slow as a turtle. Yes, I answer slowly, but the turtle won the rabbit, didn't it? Teacher, why doesn't Steve go home? I think you should go inside and ask Steve why. If he thinks I don't like him, what should I do? Do you hate Steve? No, I don't. So, what is the opposite of hate? Hate and like are opposite verbs. If I don't hate him, I think I like him. Yes, I like Steve too. Why don't you come home? I want to learn more about opposite adjectives. Why are you here? Do you need any help? I thought you hate me. No, I don't. Actually, I need your help. Do you know what the opposite of careful is? I think it's careless. Careful and careless. Thank you. In addition, we have some opposite adjectives such as cheap, expensive, clean, dirty, deep, shallow, early, late, far, near, or close, full, Empty, good, bad, interesting, boring, light, dark, wide, narrow, wet, dry, soft, hard, right, wrong, safe, dangerous. Situation 2 Hot and cold. Yellow sun, yellow sun, shining down so bright. Sunshine, sunshine, giving lots of light. This sun is warm, it hits my face. It really makes me so smile. I don't want the sun to leave, so please stay for a while. The poem is really good. When did you come? A long time ago. The weather is really hot, isn't it? Oh, I thought the sun makes you smile. 
Don't tease me. It's just a poem. Now the sun makes me want to take a shower. I must say that it's very, very, very hot. I wish it was winter now. But winter is very cold. I like cold weather. How about you? I like both, cold and hot. If the weather is cold, wear warm clothes. If it's hot, go swimming and ice cream. Let's go, baby. Snow or cool weather. Yes, winter is near. Keep warm by the fire. You should have no fear. Ice skating, snowballs, hot cocoa, and sleds. Winter is wonderful. Oh no, my nose is red. You really love poems. Yes, it makes me so really happy. Just like summer is no longer hot and winter is no longer cold. As cool as a cucumber. But I feel so hot now. Check the temperature on your phone. What degree is it? Unbelievable. 102 degrees Fahrenheit. What? So hot! I can eat 10 ice creams right now. Ice cream saves my life. Let's check the wiki how for keeping cool when in the hot weather. Good idea! What does WikiHow say? Water is essential for keeping you cool during hot weather. Water keeps your body cool and should be drunk even if you don't feel thirsty. Makes sense. Next is... Choose cooling foods. What are cooling foods? Salads, fresh raw food, vegetables, and fruit. Frozen fruit, frozen yogurt, and other frozen treats to help you cool down. And ice cream. Wear loose, lightweight, light-colored clothing and sunscreen. Try to keep out of the sun between 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Avoid exercising in the hottest parts of the day. It's useful, huh? Take cool showers or baths to cool down. Yes, it's right. I want to take a shower right now. Let's buy one more ice cream, then go swimming together to keep cool. When the weather is hot like this, let's go swimming. I agree, 100%. Situation 3. Thin and Fat Anna represents the thin team, and William represents the fat team. So, Anna, why is it good to be thin? In my opinion, thin prevents certain diseases, so it is good for your health. It is good to be thin because you can buy any clothes, and you can wear your clothes without any problems. You have no difficulty exercising. You can eat everything and do not gain weight. Like chocolate. Chocolate is so delicious, but when you get fat, you love chocolate and eat it, you'll get fatter. And thin is more attractive. Do you want to oppose, William? Yes, teacher. I think thin people usually have less strength than fat people. People with very low weight usually suffer anemia, <gasps> fainting, malnutrition, etc., Sometimes it is difficult for thin people to choose clothes, too. It does not equal healthy. Personally, I think fat people are also very cute and charming in their own way. Do you want to oppose, Anna? Maybe you're right, but do you know that many fat people struggle to breathe? Heart disease is common. Sometimes tying shoes is a challenge when fat people bend down. Fat people struggle to find clothing that look good on them. Sometimes they can't wear the clothes they like. I'm a girl, so I understand. When I won't be able to wear what I like, it's really sad. But if we talk about clothes, it's like judging a person by their appearance. It isn't fair. How you treat people is more important than how you look. No matter how fat you are, wear what you like. Whether it's vintage, hipster, girl punk, gal, or bright colors. It is just fine. 
Find a doctor who respects you and get regular checkups. I want to say this for anyone who gets fat. If you spend your life afraid of what others think and you're fat, it is a life half-lived. Don't reject yourself. Embrace yourself with a daily hug, a smile in the mirror every time you see yourself. Love yourself first, because when you love yourself, you will know that you should lose weight or not. What is good for your health? You speak very well, William. Thank you. You speak well too, Anna. Thanks, Anna and William. Both are awesome. Whether fat or thin, we should keep a balanced weight to protect our health. We should exercise for a healthy body. It's not good to be too thin or too fat. As William said, how you treat people is more important than how you look. So, if you are thin or fat, it's not important. Love yourself and respect yourself first, but remember to exercise regularly. Situation 4 Basic opposite adjectives describing appearance. How does she, he, look like? You look so beautiful tonight, Victoria, with your curly hair and your great long straight dress. Thank you, Beatrix, but I like your long straight hair and the pretty short dress you're wearing. Really? Thank you. Should we go over there and have coffee, or should we just stand here and chat? I think let's go over there, drink coffee, and chat together. Great! Would you like to eat some cookies? No, I'm full now, but I think after 15 minutes my stomach will be empty and hungry. Your digestive is really, really good. Would you like some coffee? Yes, a flavored coffee cup. Coffee is really good, but tea is really bad. Really? So I don't drink tea. I thought we went to a party earlier than everyone in here, but later then. Yeah, it seems everybody in your company came to the party. I think so. It's crowded. Look around. They look beautiful and elegant. Of course, you too and me too. Hey, Victoria, you said there's a girl who looks like an angel in your company. Is she here, and how does she look like? I don't see her now, but let me tell you. She's so beautiful. Her name is Aerith. She has short hair, which is cut to shoulder width, and she's not taller than me, but she looks so tall, like 67 inches. What particularly struck me about her was the smile. The first time I met her, I thought she was unfriendly. But when she smiles, she is really friendly. This is Angel's smile. Oh, I wish I could meet her now. I've never seen her fat. She has a slim body. Her skin is neither too white nor too dark. It is brown. Her eyes are big, but her face is small. She also has small lips. She is a marketing team leader. While working, she's very attractive. She is rigid and gentle at the same time. You look like a crazy fan. Maybe. How about men in your company? Is there any man who you impress? Let me remember. Of course there is. A man in the IT department. Hmm, what does he look like? He looks like Albert Einstein with curly hair. It's very curly, like, it can't be straight. Sometimes his head is in the clouds. When the first time I met him, his head was always down. I thought he was unconfident, but when he talks about computer programs, he looks so confident. And he is very enthusiastic. He helped me fix the computer errors. His name is Robert. Albert Einstein? I remember that Albert Einstein has straight and messy hair, not curly hair. Oh, I thought his hair was curly. Whatever, straight or curly, Albert Einstein's a genius. Victoria, who is that man? Who? Well, he's my boss. He looks so handsome, isn't he? 
Yeah, but when he asks you, what is the plan? I need your report. Where's the report? Don't be late for the deadline. At that time, he's not handsome at all. <laughs> That's so funny, my friend. But he has dark skin, beautiful skin, and his eyes are so light, light blue eyes. His nose is so high. The first time I met him, I thought he was a boring man. But when he talked, all his stories were so interesting. He is so intelligent, too. His name is Vincent. Do you call me? <gasps> oh, you startled me. If you come to ask for the year-end report, you found the wrong place. Not today, because today you have beautiful hair. But I will ask for a report tomorrow. <laughs> it's funny. I'm just kidding. Let's enjoy the party with your friend. Cheer up. Hooray! Talking about household chores. Do you understand what is household chores? Who will take responsibility to do household chores? Let's watch this video with three situations to learn about household chores. Situation 1. A normal Sunday. Cliff, can you turn a song on, please? I like Maroon 5. Adam Levine is the best. Hey, Anna. How about me? You forgot me at all? <laughs> you are the second, darling. Tom! Tom, do you hear me, sweetie? Tom, wake up! What are you doing now? Mommy, mommy, I am playing this game. It's so funny. I'm getting a gold trophy. I will... Did you wash your face and brush your teeth? Yes, mommy, I did. So do you know what you have to do now? What do you have to do on Sunday morning, Tommy? Please, Mommy, I don't want to do them. Tommy. Okay, Mom, I will do them after finishing this round. Okay, I will give you five minutes. Do you remember what you have to do? I have to do the laundry and make the bed. Do you forget Plum? Oh, my, sorry, Plum. I will feed Plum and then walk him in the park. Okay, so do it now. Plum is so hungry. I see, Mommy. Plum, let's go. I will take you some food first. Honey, what are you doing? Can you help me to take out the rubbish? I am washing the car, babe. I will do it later. Okay, don't forget. I have to go to the supermarket now. Which do you want for lunch, honey? We shall have barbecue on Sunday, babe. I will have beef and chicken. Buy me some beers as well. Well, I will try to be back in one hour. Remember to fix the faucet in the kitchen, honey. I think we need a new one to replace it. Okay, I'm going to check it. It's late. You should go now, babe. <gasps> Jesus, 10 a.m. already. Bye, honey. Tell Tommy to do his homework after going to the park. Got it, honey. Bye, babe. Situation 2. One day on the weekend. Bobby, can you give me some ketchup, please? Here you are, honey. This bread is so soft. Where did you buy it, honey? It's a new one from B.S. Bakery. I know you will love it, babe. B.S. Bakery is at the end of this street? Yes, it is. What's up? Nothing. The security man just moved to the house next to ours. I just spoke with him yesterday when I was doing exercise and he was raking the leaves in the garden. Should I come and say hello? Maybe. What is the plan for today, honey? I don't know yet, babe. Maybe we should do some household chores together. 
Oh, it's so weird. Today is the weekend, honey. But we don't have time to do it together all week. It won't take a long time, babe. Okay. What should I do now, honey? First, wash the dishes. We finished breakfast already. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Do not break them anymore. Do you remember you broke our couple of cups two weeks ago? Nah, it's just a small mistake, honey. Then can we go to the supermarket? I want to buy a new shampoo. Mine ran out two days ago. Yeah, I see. I'm going to order it for you, but it's okay. We can go to the supermarket today. Wait a minute, babe. So you were using mine the two days, aren't you? Mmm, a little bit. But yours is a really nice smell. Can I use it with you from now on? No way, babe. I will mop the floor while waiting for you. You should clean the microwave first. Then when you're done, we can clean the house together. Well, but I just mop the floor and you dust the furniture and clean the windows. They are too high, so I cannot reach them. Okay, then we can go to the supermarket, huh? Remind me to take out the rubbish when we leave home. Let's go to the mall, everybody. Ha! Go! Bob, do you hear me? Yes, I know. Let's go to the mall, everybody. Ha! Go! Situation 3. Anna and Thomas do their housework. Anna! Thomas! What are you doing now? Oh, oh, morning, Mom. I just woke up and made the bed, but Thomas is still sleeping. Really? Did you try to wake him up? Yes, I did, but he didn't listen to me. I'm so hungry, Mama. I just did the cooking. You can have bread or soup. I will wake Thomas up, then go to work. There are some household chores that the two of you have to do before I come home. Yes, I see, Mom. Bye-bye. Anna, what do we have for breakfast? I have bread and an egg. Mom said you can eat soup as well. It's still warm. Okay, I will have soup. What are you doing, Anna? I am watering these trees. They look like they are going to die in some days. Thomas, Mom said we have to do some housework before she comes home. I will sweep the yard and you should hang up the laundry. But I'm afraid that I cannot reach the clothesline, Anna. So what should you want to do? It's the easiest. I can vacuum the floor and feed the dog. Okay, after vacuuming, you should take out the rubbish as well. Mom will be angry if the rubbish bin is full. I'm not a baby anymore. I know what I have to do, Anna. Okay, do not forget to wash the dishes when you finish your breakfast. Well, it's not fun. I hate washing dishes. What is that noise, Thomas? I don't know. The vacuum cleaner is not working. Its machine is hot. Turn it off, Thomas. It may be broken. You should use the broom in the garage. It's heavy, Anna, and it's hard to use, you know. No more reasons, Thomas. I know you just don't want to do it. Sweep the house and I will help you to mop the floor. Perfect deal. Quickly, Mom will be home soon. <gasps> Jesus, I forgot to fold my blanket. I will do it first. I will come back soon. Quickly, Thomas, I give you ten seconds. I know, Anna, just a few minutes. Wait for me. Time for bed. This video will help you give advices to your friends or relatives that we should go to bed early. Because sleep is so important. It helps us have a great health to can do everything. Situation 1. It's time for bed.
What time is it? It's 10 o'clock. Time for bed. I will brush my teeth and go to bed. I'll go upstairs and take a look. Andy? Why haven't you slept yet? Andy, what are you doing? When I finished my homework, it was late at night, but I want to read this. What are you reading? Harry Potter. He looks shy, but very talented. When you finish this story, can you tell me about him? I have many things to tell you about him. Awesome! But it's not early now. You read a bit, and then go to bed, okay? But I want to read all of Chapter 3 today, Mom. Listen, darling, many friends and teachers like Harry Potter, right? That's right, Mom. Do you know why? Because he's the main character? No, darling, because he always comes to class on time, completes all his homework, and he's kind, so everyone likes him. Sounds like him. He's brave, too, and I also completed my homework. But if you go to bed late, you'll wake up late tomorrow, and maybe go to class late. Really, Mom? Yes, and if you go to bed early, while sleeping, the brain will work to support your memory. It helps you remember the lesson longer. So, I read a book until 10.30 p.m., then go to bed? Okay, 10.30 is time for bed. Promise? I promise. Remember? Harry Potter doesn't break his promise, and Andy doesn't break his promise, too. Good boy. Good night, darling. Situation 2. Don't work too much. Go to bed early. Are you still working? Honey, what time is it? Wait, it's 1 a.m. Oh, too late. That's right, my husband. You love your job more than your health. I'm almost done, honey. Go to sleep now or I'll carry you up there. <laughs> if you're strong enough, I won't stop you. I'll sit here until you go to sleep. If you sleep late, your face will get acne. If you sleep late, your memory will decline. You will be like a grandfather. Grandfather? If you sleep late, you will have dark circles under your eyes. You'll be like a panda. If you don't go to bed early, you will have a headache. That affects your health and your work. If you sleep late, your hair will fall out and not be beautiful anymore. If you don't go to bed now, your hair will fall out too, and you will be a bald guy. I also want to try a new hairstyle. Okay, so if you stay up late, your muscles will turn to fat. Okay, I go to sleep now. Let's go to bed together. But if you keep going to bed late because of work, what should I do? Um, you beat me to faint, then carry me to bed. Don't joke. You can get many diseases. Your eyes will weaken, heart disease, high blood pressure, and more. I promise that I'll go to bed early. Um, instead of staying up late working, why don't you get up early? I'll do as you say, so don't worry. Now time for bed. Situation 3 Stop playing games. Go to bed. Hey, give me some blood, man. There's an enemy on the roof. Be careful. Do you see the AKM gun? No, I don't see any AKM. But there is an AWM gun here. Where is it? I was asleep, but you talk too loud. It wakes me up. I'm sorry, I'll keep quiet. 
You go to sleep now or don't make any noise while playing that game. I don't want to be woken up anymore. Hey, Thomas. I have a final exam tomorrow. I don't want to wake up late because I can't sleep. Okay, I know. I'll play this game with you. If my score is higher from now, you have to go to bed early. Really? A nerd like you can't beat me. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. OMG! Tom, you're a master. How did you defeat so many enemies? I used to stay up late to play games for a long time. One night, my eyes couldn't see anything. Then I fell to the ground. The doctor said I have a heart problem. Oh, I didn't know. Is your heart okay now? Sometimes it hurts, sometimes not. My health is weaker, so that year I didn't enroll in military school. I'm so sorry. If you still see me as a friend, let me sleep well. I don't want to sleep late anymore. I still have many dreams to fulfill. I'm sorry. Even I play the game every night, but it's still not good like you. If you still care about your health, you should go to bed early. If you want to play a lot of games, you should have good health first. Situation 4. Remember to sleep early for the picnic tomorrow. Do you know what time it is, Mia? It's 10.45 p.m. What's up, Crystal? Tomorrow we have to get up early for our class trip. I know. Tell me the truth. Are you watching a movie, right? How do you know? Are you following me? Yes, I follow you on Instagram. The movie is so good. I will watch it all night. That's what you posted on Instagram at 10.30 p.m. I know I have to go to bed early to wake up early tomorrow. If you're late, I'll leave you and go first. Look at what my best friend said. I won't be late. Have you prepared everything? I think it's enough. Okay, time for the test. What's the test? Okay, okay. That sounds interesting. What time will we depart tomorrow? 8.30. We will go to the beach. Correct! Next question. What did you put in your suitcase? Sunscreen, towels, swimwear, sunglasses, hats, beautiful dresses, and beach sandals. Remember to bring a plastic bag for your swimwear, underwear, toothbrushes, shower gel, shampoo, and snacks. That's right. I'll bring lots of snacks and medicine for car sickness. I'm so excited! I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I can't sleep. If you can't sleep, try counting sheep. And don't eat late. Snacks at night make you difficult to sleep. Okay, I'll put on a mask, then go to bed. Remember going to bed early, or tomorrow you will have acne and look like a panda. Even the sea won't dare look at your face. Look, look, I know. You're like my grandma. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you. Calling for an ambulance. When you are in an emergency situation, you should calm down and call for help. What should you talk about when you give an emergency call? Let's watch this video and learn about some situations. Situation 1. An accident. Mark, look at it. What is it? I don't know. It seems to be a person. Perhaps he got in an accident. He is trying to stand up in pain. Should we go to see what happened to him? Okay, let's go. 
Hey man, what's happened with you? Do you need any help? Can you help me to stand up, please? Sure. What happened? I was crossing the road and then a car came by and hit me. He drove too fast so I cannot recognize the number plate of the car. Are you okay? Not sure. I have a lot of pain. Mark, I think we should call for an ambulance. I think it's okay. I will go to the hospital tomorrow. No, look at you. You cannot move by yourself. I will call an ambulance for you. Hello, it's 911. What service do you need? Ambulance, police, or fire brigade? Could you send an ambulance, please? There is one person who is hit by a car. Okay, is he unconscious? No, no, he is awake, but he is in pain and I think he is bleeding inside. Okay, where is your location? It's number 398 Olive. We are at the crossroad near the traffic light. Okay, please help him to calm down and be conscious. If there is any problem, please call back immediately. Okay, please send an ambulance as soon as possible. Sure, one ambulance is coming now. No worries. Thanks. Situation 2. Call for the fire brigade. <gasps> Wake up! Wake up, Max! What's up, baby? Do you smell anything? Smell? Nothing. It smells like burning plastic. Let me see. <gasps> oh my god, come here, look at it, bae. <gasps> oh my god! The fire is an off factory, isn't it? Is Peter there? Maybe no. Peter told me that he went to Bristol for his aunt's wedding. What should we do now, Max? It looks so terrible. You should call Peter to inform him about this situation. I'm calling for a fire brigade now. The emergency number is 911, isn't it? Yes, Max, what's wrong with you? I'm too anxious, babe. Hello, it's Emergency Control Center. Do you need police, fire, or ambulance? Fire brigade, please. There is a serious fire near my house. I, I don't know when it started. Okay, please calm down. What's the address? I don't know the exact number. It is the OFF factory close to my house. My address is number 1654 Old Mansfield Road. The factory is about 200 meters away. Okay, can you tell me what happened? I don't know exactly. I was sleeping when I smelled the burning plastic. And I see the factory in the neighborhood is in flames. I came closer to have a look. It has caught fire dangerously. The fire seems to engulf the whole factory by swift winds. Everyone and you should stay away from the fire, okay? Is anyone injured? Luckily, no. Is there anyone stuck in the factory? I think not, but I'm not sure. Normally, there are no workers in there on the weekend. Okay, the fire brigade are coming now. Remember to stay away from the fire to keep yourselves safe. Okay, please come as soon as possible. Sure. Situation 3. Calling for an ambulance. Tony. Tony. Where are you now? What are you doing? Do you hear me? I don't want to play hide and seek with you. Answer me. <gasps> oh my god, what happened to you? Tony, wake up. Wake up. I have to call for an ambulance. Where is my phone? This is 911. Hello, who is calling? My son is unconscious. I need to bring him to the hospital now. Please hurry. Okay, please calm down. You want to call for an ambulance, don't you? Yes, please. 
Okay, where is your location? Number 67, Patrick Street. It's the building on the corner with two big oak trees. Okay, I see. You should calm down and listen to me, okay? All right. The ambulance is on the way now to bring your son to the hospital. Can you tell me what happened with your son? I... I don't know. I was cooking in the kitchen, then when I called him to have lunch, he didn't answer me. I looked for him around my house, and I see he was unconscious in the garage. Does he have a background disease? No, his health is good. Okay, are there any hard or sharp objects around? No, not at all. Is he bleeding or anything? No, he is just unconscious. Okay, you should look after him until the ambulance comes. If he takes agonal breathing, you should start CPR, okay? Okay, when does the ambulance come? It is on the way, no worries. They'll be with you shortly. Okay, thank you. Situation 4. Boiling Water Burn <coughs> It's Emergency Control Center. Hello, what service do you need? Ambulance, police, or fire brigade? Hello, I want to call the ambulance. Okay, are you with the patient right now? Uh, I am the patient. Oh, okay, is someone with you? No, I'm home alone. Okay, what happened to you? I was boiling water for my noodles, then accidentally the pan fell down. My foot is burned now. I cannot feel anything except hurt. Okay, where are you exactly? I'm in flat 6 on the second floor, number 36, North Rhodes Street. So the address is number 36, North Rhodes Street? That's where we're going, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, help is on the way. They'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Now listen to me. I will give you some first aid tips. All right, what should we do now? Do you have a first aid kit or something? Yes. You should go to the bathroom, then apply cool running water to cool the area for at least 20 minutes or until the ambulance arrives. Okay, can I use ice? No, you shouldn't. Don't use ice, iced water, or greasy substances. Okay. Anything else? After that, you can cover the burn with a moist bandage or clean cloth. Okay. And remember, don't break any blisters. I haven't seen any blisters appear yet. Okay, that's good. The ambulance is coming now. Keep yourself alert. Okay, thanks. Talk to your friends about work. Situation 1. Beth meets her high school friend, Lily, after five years, and they talk about their current work. Hey, Lily. Over here. Oh, hi, Beth. Long time no see. How have you been? It's nice to see you again, Lily. I'm doing fine. How about you? Do you work or study? I'm okay. I graduated last year and I'm now in full-time employment. And you? I didn't go to college. I went straight to cooking classes and finding jobs. And now I'm working as a chef at a restaurant downtown. What is your job? I'm currently an English teacher working for Boston High School in New York. Oh, that's great! Why did you choose that job? I was previously a lawyer and found it to be stressful and never had any free time. So after quitting that job, I thought teaching might be not as stressful and more time off. Was teaching your passion? Yes, since I was a child. But my family directed me to study law. And now that I'm older, I found out what I really wanted. I remember cooking is also your passion, right? 
Yes, but lucky for me, my family supports my dream and my career. Do you enjoy your job? Most of the time. It's very rewarding to be able to help people every day, and the students here are very hardworking and fun to teach. Working at a restaurant is exhausting, but people are so nice to me. Do you get on well with your co-workers? Yes, fine. I don't really see work as a part of my social life, so I don't socialize with them. I think it's more professional to be that way. What was your first day like? There were lots of teachers starting at the same time as me, so we all had a big induction day. The senior teachers ran workshops with us to familiarize us with the systems they had, and then we went for a work team dinner in the evening. My first day at work was like any other day at the restaurant. I started working right away, and I have a supervisor to help me with the work. It was scary at first. What responsibilities do you have at work? All of the teacher's main responsibility is to plan good lessons and then teach them. On top of that, we have several admin tasks like mark homework, fill out attendance sheets, and write reports. I'm on the dessert part of the kitchen staff team, so I have to prepare fruits, baking cakes all the day, but I love my job. Would you change your job in the future? Yes, I like working by myself, so I would like to be my own boss. I want to open my restaurant. What is your typical day like at work? I start the day by doing all the planning at home before going to work around 3 to print off my materials, and then I teach all evening. What would you change about your job? I would like to have more freedom to teach outside the syllabus. I get it. At the restaurant, they want me to follow the recipes, but I want to put my ideas into baking. What is the most important part of your work? I think that dealing with customers will be the most important part of my work. I learn to be polite and keep smiling, even with some of the more challenging customers. I know, I have to deal with some tough students' parents and some stubborn kids, but most of the time the kids are nice. It's great seeing you doing what you love. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, me too. And good luck with your dream plan. Thanks. Situation 2. It's Dave's first day to work, and he calls his friend, Nick, to ask for advice about the first day of work. Hey Nick, it's Dave. Hey, what's up? Tomorrow is my first day of work at Global Complex, and I need some advice on how to make the best first impression. Your first day of work is very important. It's foundational and sets a good start for your job going forward. How is the first day of work often like? The first day is typically when you'll see your work area, learn your workflow and schedule, meet your coworkers, get familiar with different areas of your office or building. Do I have to dress up? Yes, dress up to make a good impression and ensure you're meeting the company's dress code. If everyone around you is dressed more casually, you can adjust your clothing choices in later days. How early should I go? Rush hour traffic could make your commute take longer than a typical trip to the same area, and showing up for your job early is much better than being late. Are there any important documents that I should pay attention to? You need to review employment contracts and take care of paperwork such as tax forms, your new employer's health insurance coverage, retirement plans, vacation policy, I don't know if I should ask many questions. Asking questions now will help you avoid mistakes in the future. Being inquisitive also shows that you want to do well in your new position. Okay, and should I make friends at work? Making friends will encourage your coworkers to think of you as one of the team. A good friend could also help you advance your career. How should I do it? Smile, be cheerful, and introduce yourself to as many of your new co-workers as you can. During breaks, start conversations by asking which restaurants or coffee shops are nearby. I can do that. And eating lunch is a great way to make friends and find out more about the people you'll be working with. 
I will make friends with people who can help me most. I can get useful advice about how to succeed at my new job. That's a good idea. Learning from the right coworkers is important. You should listen to people's conversations carefully and watch their behavior. Okay, I will do that. Remember to pay attention to your body language. Sit or stand up straight to avoid signs of nervousness or boredom, such as touching your hair, tapping your foot, or yawning. I will have a supervisor. I'm so nervous around the boss. If your supervisor sends you an email or tells you to come to their office, respond immediately. This demonstrates both respect and enthusiasm. Okay, but what if I made a mistake? Most employers understand if you make a few minor mistakes on your first day of work, remember that you'll have a chance to do better tomorrow. Okay, is that all? The last thing is saying goodbye when you leave. Thank your supervisor for hiring you and let them know that you enjoyed the first day. What if they feel talkative? What should I say? I'm so shy. You can talk to them about your day and how you plan to handle future projects. Wish them a good night and tell them that you look forward to seeing them tomorrow. Okay, thank you for your help. You make me feel less worried. No problem. Text me if you need any help. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment on my video. Please subscribe to Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos. Goodbye.